Hey guys, welcome to part 1 of what if Naruto seriously trained under Drea if you enjoy the video then like share and subscribe and also comment your thoughts as it inspires me to make more such videos and remember to check out my playlist section for other interesting stories. So let's get started. Chapter 1 Epiphany Hotake Kakashi considered himself the elite. Graduating at an early age, it didn't take long enough until he was promoted to Chunin, Jounin, and then straight to Anbu. When the Sand Dime lined him for taking a Genin team, he didn't like it one bit. It got worse since all the teams who were lined with him ended up failing from lack of teamwork. When Team 7 was given to him, at first he thought it would be just like all the prior teams. However, when Sasuke offered food to Sakura, he actually considered this team to be the only one who got the idea of teamwork. Clearly, he didn't expect to carry one of his students on his arms after a Kadori wound on his chest from another one of his students. Channeling Chakra to his feet, he needed to get back to Konoha as fast as possible, otherwise Naruto's life would be over. On the way Kakashi cursed Achiha Sasuke for what he did both against the village and against Naruto attempting to kill him with a Kadori on his chest. Most of all, he was cursing himself for two reasons. First of all, he cursed his blind trust in Sasuke and second, he cursed himself for teaching his assassination technique to someone who would use it on his best friend. After a while, the gates approached and in seconds Kakashi passed by it. He couldn't afford to wait since he needed Sinead or Shizun right away. In 10 seconds, he barged in Sinead's office with a bloody Naruto on his hands. At first, the Hokage objected as to the reason of the intrusion however upon seeing whose body was on Kakashi's arms the doctor and her sprung into action and within minutes, Naruto was in a hospital bed, getting all patched up and receiving some chakra incision in order for his wounds to heal faster. The next day minus. The next day, all members of the retrieval mission returned home, although some of them almost didn't make it. Akimishi Chouchi was suffering from the effects of his family's chakra pills. Hailiga Neji came with a giant hole inches away from a fatal wound. The rest of the group sustained minor injuries, and was already cleared from the hospital. The leader of the mission and only Chunin of the group, Nara Shikamaru was wondering about his first leading mission, and how much of a failure it was. Truth be told, no one could blame him seeing that his team was up against Jounin level shinobi and somehow survived the assault. Also, they would be able to get Sasuke back, had one Kagiya Kimimaro not stepped in to aid the enemy. However, Shikamaru, even after both Sinead and his father encouraged him to grow as a shinobi still blamed himself for almost getting two or three of his friends killed. That doesn't mean that the Nara heir would ever give up the path he chose it. Not because it would be so damn troublesome as he put it, but as his dad put it, not every mission goes according to plan, and that the failures exists to show what needs to be changed or improved. Shikamaru, use this failed opportunity to improve your abilities as both a shinobi and a leader. Use this mission to be better prepared for the future so that mistakes like this can no longer occur, said Shikaku at the time and Shikamaru acknowledged these words to heart. He would get stronger, and he would improve his abilities. Man this is troublesome, but I'll ask Asuma sensei to help me with training, thought Shikamaru as he went home to rest after what seemed to be the longest mission of his life so far. However, while Shikamaru found the answer to his questions, there was one specific blonde who was lying on the hospital bed, not wanting to see anyone right now. He just looked outside as the sun was about to leave Konoha for the day and let the moon do its job. One would find it strange to see a usually hyperactive boy choosing, instead, to look at the window in pure reflection of the current events that occurred. However, one single event still didn't let his mind be. If it wasn't for the damn fox, Sasuke's Kudori would have killed him by either piercing a lung or the immense amount of blood loss. Naruto wondered if truly Sasuke was being controlled by Orochimaru as he as well as everyone presumed. Nonetheless, only Naruto himself could vow for who was in control of the Uka's body at the moment simply because he was the one who fought him. For the first time since he met Sasuke, Naruto was in doubt over Sasuke's behavior. Of course, he knew Sasuke was a brooding bastard, but never did he think Sasuke would pierce his lung so ruthlessly before. These events made Naruto realize that maybe he was the only one being delusional as to believe that Sasuke wouldn't be capable of something like this. Right before the Kudori attack, 
Sasuke did admit that Naruto was his best friend, however after the attack, the blonde questioned himself as to the Achiha really understanding what meant the expression best friend. Killing someone they consider a friend, it would be safe to say the person was mad, but to kill a best friend, it would be like saying the man didn't have blood running through his veins. He remembered how much the others suffered as well trying to bring Sasuke back, and it sickened him to realize that had Sasuke not left, none of his real friends would be injured in the first place. For the first time, since he met the Achiha Naruto became skeptical over his friendship with Achiha Sasuke. What if Sasuke was always like this and the cursed seal was just the push needed for him? If such a thing was true, then why did I ever bother? Why did I even bother to see if I surpassed him or not? Those were the thoughts that now occupied Naruto's mind up to the point of him going through every experience that he had inside his mind and wondered why he focused only on beating the traitor than trying to improve the areas he lacked. Naruto immediately felt like he played the part of an idiot all this time. He was remembering every single screw-up he ever committed, and how delusional he was for thinking that with just cage bunching and an incomplete racing gan, he would be able to grow as a shinobi. He now acknowledged that everything he ever thought about everything he ever holds on to wasn't what it should be. Not focusing enough at the academy, not focusing enough to learn the basics before attempt the harder techniques. In fact, he remembered only passing the academy because he was able to do a technique that didn't even require a lot of knowledge to begin with. The Cage Bunshin no Jutsu Shadow Clone technique did only require one hand seal and a lot of chakra to waste. The only thing he needed for this technique was to be able to mold chakra and that he learned just after he entered the academy. Now grinding his teeth in agony upon not applying himself when needed in the past, Naruto cursed his very existence and also his lack to concentrate on his goal. This was the scene that a certain silver-haired Jounin saw upon opening the door. Kakashi knew Naruto didn't want to see anyone and he was worried for his student. Usually, Naruto wouldn't behave like this and truth be told Kakashi was a little frightened that this event ended up closing Naruto's heart for good. He understood that Sasuke meant to Naruto just as Uchiha Abito meant to him and if Abito ended up wanting to kill him. Kakashi would be desolated right now. Naruto, upon acknowledging his sensei's presence kept staring at him with a disapproving glare since he thought he told everyone that he didn't want to see anyone right now. Can I help you sensei? Asked Naruto with a tone that showed Kakashi that his presence was unwanted right now. Kakashi for his part awoke from his wonderings and turned to study Naruto's strangely dark blue eyes right now. Usually, Naruto's eyes displayed a bright ocean blue that could be quite enticing. However now the Naruto in front of him wasn't the real Naruto. Well, can't a sensei come to visit his student? I happen to know that you didn't want to see anyone right now, but I just wanted to talk for a second said Kakashi as he picked up a chair on the far corner and placed it so that he could seat right in front of Naruto. The blonde for his part eyed Kakashi's movements and wondered what the hell Kakashi wanted to talk to him in the first place. Naruto assumed that Kakashi would try explaining a different version of the situation, maybe try running some damage control on it, but he allowed Kakashi to begin the conversation to which the silver-haired Jounin nodded and turned to state. Listen Naruto, I'm here to talk to you in regards of what you're feeling right now towards your teammate. Asked Kakashi, but the look that Naruto returned to him was something he never thought he would see. Naruto's eyebrows were slightly lifted, as in Kakashi just said something curious to the blonde. Naruto was also smiling as well, but it was not even remotely close to one of his goofy smiles that everyone grew accustomed to. It was an ironic smile, particularly used when someone uses sarcasm to answer a question. Explain the word teammate for me, Kakashi-sensei. I may not have much experience with this kind of thing, but I know that teammates don't try to kill their teammates with a kudari on the chest. It was ironic, though that just moments before he did this, he considered me as his best friend. If I he did this to his best friend, I don't want to know what he does to his enemies retorted Naruto as in Kakashi just committed the biggest mistake of all times. However, he knew he was right, and also Kakashi knew he was right. After hearing the response, Kakashi wasn't surprised nor was he shocked to hear Naruto speaking like this. Nonetheless, Kakashi's reason for visiting wasn't only related to how Naruto was doing, but also to hear the blondes report on their fight. 
When questioned, Naruto told him everything that occurred after he left Rock Lee to fight the Kaguya person. After Kakashi lifted himself from the chair, he wished nice recovery to Naruto and went for the door before being stopped by the blonde. Kakashi Sensei, I. I want to ask you something, said Naruto, to which Kakashi nodded and turned to stare the blonde, who by now was remembering what he was thinking just before his sensei entered the room. Do you believe in the word regret? asked Naruto, earning a suspicious look from Kakashi, who clearly didn't see this coming, especially one coming from Izumaki Naruto, the boy who always screamed his never giving up slogan. After he returned to seating at the chair he once was, Naruto continued. Tell me something, Kakashi sensei, and be honest about it. On your point of view, how I stand in terms of shinobi abilities? Asked Naruto once again, now showing Kakashi what was this all about. Turning to think for a bit, at first he wondered why Naruto was asking said question, but thought about it either way. On a rational point of view, Kakashi didn't believe Naruto to have what it takes to become a ninja. Even though he was, indeed, a chakra house, his chakra control wasn't near as good as an average genin. His speed skills were mediocre at best and his taijutsu is close to street fight as possible. However, he knew that once Naruto fixated his mind on something, he was certain Naruto would manage to finish no matter what. When he looked at Naruto's eyes he knew Naruto was waiting for a straight answer here, so he gave his point of view. If you want an honest opinion about it, you have a long way in front of you if improvement is what you seek. Your chakra control isn't appropriate and your fighting skills are close to a street fight. Above all things a genin level shinobi has to have at least the academy level teijutsu and above water walking level of chakra control. Your ninjutsu could use some work but this area is the least of your concern stated Kakashi before he looked to Naruto, waiting for him to explode and demand him to take everything back. But surprisingly he didn't. Naruto just stood there staring at Kakashi for a moment before smiling and nodding in appreciation. I appreciate the honest answer Kakashi sensei, and I was wondering if you could help me with something. I can't leave here for another two days, so might as well get to training. Would you mind picking some books that will help me understand some concepts better asked Naruto to which Kakashi looked at him as in Naruto grew another head. Naruto, Wanting to read books was really something he didn't expect. Nonetheless, Kakashi just nodded in affirmative and asked what he needed. Thanks, well I was wondering if the library had any scrolls on Upper Academy Teijutsu and Chakra Control. Also, I'm sure there is a book on Ninjutsu I could learn apart from the two I already know stated Naruto to which Kakashi nodded, and said he would see what he could find and then return soon. A few hours later minus. After giving Naruto some books about some forms of Teijutsu, Chakra Control and D2C ranked Ninjutsu techniques, Kakashi was in front of Tsunade explaining Naruto's fight to her and also expressing his concerns about the blonde. Tsunade was impressed about hearing Naruto applying himself in studies and told Kakashi of what Jiryu wants to do with Naruto, once he received clearance from the hospital. Kakashi Jiriya is going to take Naruto with him for a two and a half years training trip. He plans to teach Naruto better deals with the Kyubi's chakra as well as focus on some points the blonde lacked in his shinobi education. Now considering that Naruto is already studying to correct his flaws, maybe Jiriya can initiate him on more advanced forms of ninpu ninja arts. Now, you're saying that Naruto is now skeptical towards Sasuke said Tsunade, with the late statement sounding like a question. Yes, Tsunade Sama according to him someone who tries to kill him doesn't deserve to be called teammate. It was clear in his eyes, how much hate and anger he is feeling right now. I can only worry about his path now, that whatever innocence yet left in him, now it was completely shattered by Sasuke's doing said Kakashi, still looking down like he was considering the event to be somehow his fault. Looking at Naruto losing his innocence was enough to shatter whatever confidence Kakashi had in himself both as a shinobi and as a teacher. Also, when Kakashi laid out Naruto's flaws, Kakashi knew that he should be the one correcting it, since Naruto was his student after all. Also, he expected Naruto to shout about not receiving fair treatment, but instead, all the blonde did was appreciate his honest answer, and ask for some books so that he could improve the areas he lacked at the moment. To Kakashi, it felt like Naruto didn't need him for much. It went without saying though, that his pain was visible and Sinead caught it easily. What are you thinking Kakashi? What is it on your mind right now? Asked Sinead, 
a little worried about seeing Kakashi's dejected face looking down the floor, as in he was the one to blame for this whole situation ever occurring. Tanaid was surprised to see Naruto asking for some books, and wondering why he didn't come for Kakashi for help. It couldn't be that Naruto didn't consider Kakashi to teach him what he needs to know, however if that was the truth, then something happened to let him to think about this. Lifting his head to look at the Hokage in the eye, he answered with all honesty possible. Seeing Naruto asking for books to help him improve made me realize where I made a mistake. Out of pointing out Naruto's mistakes, not one time I set myself to correct them. Not even when he managed to succeed in passing to the last phase of the Chunin exams, did I try to improve his abilities. Instead, I focused on Sasuke and placed Naruto under the hands of Ebisi before Jiryu came up and taught him some stuff. Naruto must believe that he wouldn't get any help from me so he chose to train by himself. I guess I'm not a competent teacher as I led myself to believe said Kakashi to which Tsunade sighed, but she had already figured something like this happened. Speaking of Naruto as a subject, she could easily find a number of things that needed correction however Kakashi ended up neglecting the boy training, and that cost him dearly had the Kyubi's chakra not helped Naruto. Kakashi, I understand how you feel, but bear in mind that not everything is lost. Naruto will receive the training he needs from Jiria, and I'm sure he'll come back an entirely different shinobi. I just hope that he doesn't come back a different human being though, but that's something to worry for later. Also, since I nominated Sakura as my apprentice, I'm afraid Team 7 is adjourned until Naruto comes back from his training trip. Now, the village is soon to recover its financial support it once had and more missions requests are coming. I'm placing you on some of them. Present here tomorrow at 10 for debriefing and I consider that you're not late this time. If you know what's right for you said Tsunade, more like threatening Kakashi to which said man swallowed hard and left the place. With Naruto minus. After Kakashi brought him the books, Naruto didn't waste time and took the Teijutsu book. He initially thought about using cage bunching all the time to do the fighting. However using said technique ended up misdirecting his concentration to the point of his attacks being pitiful to watch. As Naruto went through some advanced forms of Teijutsu, he was remembering some aspects of the academy Teijutsu style, which was good since he could practice now when he leaves the hospital. Defensive positions Offensive positions Naruto was recollecting everything he saw at the academy, and he was remembering that he didn't use it once during his missions. It was already late at night, but the blonde didn't want to sleep right now. He's been lying down for enough time to condemn sleeping, so he instead focused on studying and improving his knowledge. He considered sleeping later, since he wouldn't be able to leave the premises anyway, so he continued reading through several Teijutsu katas, which consisted of attack and defensive forms of the fighting style. It didn't take long to finish the book, since it contained a number of images to explain the positions rather than an actual text. Moving on he took the chakra control book and was surprised to see that water walking and tree walking are just gen and level chakra control. According to the book, the next level would be suspending a kunai on top of the ninja's hand using chakra to sustain the object in the air. Naruto learned that in order to attain this level of chakra control, he had to constantly exhale a thin layer of chakra off his hand in order to keep the kunai suspended. He also learned that this exercise is extremely complex to do, simply because just like all kinds of chakra control exercises, using too much chakra will send the kunai flying and too little, the kunai wouldn't even leave the ninja's hand. He kept reading the book on chakra control all night and didn't even bother to look when the first ray of sunlight entered his room. He was few pages from finishing the book and his brain was already filled with valuable information both on teijutsu katas and advanced chakra control exercises. Minutes after, he closed the book and looked outside for a while. So many information being hidden and he didn't even bother thinking about reading this earlier. There was only one book left to read, but this one he could wait a little bit. His head was already hurting from reading two books all night and he guessed a little rest was a must. Before though, he turned to look outside one more time and managed to see a couple of ninjas jumping through rooftops in speeds he never seen before. They must be channeling chakra through their legs to accelerate their movements. I guess I could do that as well. That would improve my chakra control as well thought Naruto as he closed his eyes and slept instantly. Little did he know though, 
that a tote Senin was observing him all the time since he arrived in town. Daryu heard from Sinead and Kakashi that Naruto chose to study ways to improve some of his flaws, and he couldn't help but be surprised about seeing Naruto reading not only a book, but two books all night. Daria considered focusing more on controlling Kyubi's chakra however seeing the level of focus that the boy attained, he guessed that making him stronger would be better. A stronger body had a stronger spirit, and a stronger spirit wouldn't be subjected to being controlled by anyone. This Naruto is a wild card, isn't it? Asked Daria presumably to no one at all, until Kakashi's figure appeared hiding in the shadows, nodding. I guess his last fight showed a lot to him, and now he's correcting his flaws. Those books I gave him actually contained Chunin level material. I guess this way I can make up for the lost time with him said Kakashi while reading his all-favorite book, earning a smile from the pervert Sanin who in turn acknowledged Kakashi's feeling of guilt, until Kakashi once again manifested. Now that you're taking him with you, I believe he will improve a lot more than with me. After all, you were the one who taught him the racing gan water walking and Kachiyo's summoning technique, where I on the other hand, taught him only tree walking said Kakashi to which Daryu nodded. Don't be this way Kakashi. Regret is not a word ninjas should rely on. Also Naruto is now on his way to become a fine shinobi, which was quite surprising to me at least, since when I first saw him the brat was impulsive and annoying. I wonder if I should begin elemental training with him during the trip. Wonder what element is his chakra aligned with? Asked Ryu mostly to himself, but Kakashi couldn't help but smile, since he would know this information in a while. Looking to the room once again, Jiryu saw Shizun entering and checking on Naruto's condition before writing on his file, and leave the room. One thing that worried Jiryu was that Naruto didn't have visitors, but then he remembered someone saying that Naruto wished to be left alone, so he didn't bother. However, just as he was about to turn and leave he saw someone entering the room and it turned out to be a few of his comrades, namely Sakura Ino Neji, Kiba Shikamaru and Chauchi. After sneaking in, the group turned to watch the sleepy Naruto, and a few noticed the books next to his bed. Sakura wondered why Naruto wanted to be left alone just like everyone else did. She eventually went to check the books, and was surprised to see Naruto reading for the first time. The group considered waking him up to talk to him. However it seemed that all of them chose to just look at him and wonder how could someone so hyperactive could sleep so peacefully like that. The sunlight didn't bother the blonde at all and the light brightened his hair up to the point of showing a different image of Naruto to those who knew him. He seems different, somehow said Ino standing next to Shikamaru and Chauchi, getting nods from everyone present, except for Sakura who in turn, kept looking at him. Sakura wanted to hear confident words coming from the blonde, Words like next time they will be able to bring Sasuke back, or I won't rest, until we bring him back. With Sasuke gone, Naruto was now her only source for strength. She wanted Naruto to tell her about Sasuke's behavior, since the report on the mission was considered confidential to Jen and Ears, apart from those who participated in the mission. I really wished to know more about what happened out there though. Rumors had it that Naruto returned deeply hurt from the fight but Sasuke wouldn't do such a thing to Naruto. They are teammates and friends said Sakura more like asking all those present for confirmation, but neither of them shared the same opinion. Neji for instance, chose to reply against Sakura's comment, since he used to be like the Uchiha in some way. Sakura-san, I don't concur with your assessment over the Uchiha. It was because of him, we all came back with near-fatal wounds. Also, Naruto fought with the Uchiha so it's only logical to assume that the injury was caused by him. Sasuke is in darkness right now, and such a feat wouldn't be far from his kind of behavior. I happen to know that since until I fought against Naruto, I used to be like this as well. Naruto rescued me from the darkness, but he couldn't do the same thing for Sasuke stated Neji to which Sakura looked at the stoic Hailiga, but couldn't counter his argument. She knew how cold Sasuke became after the incident with Orochimaru. I don't mean to hurt you Sakura, but Sasuke's actions were appalling and constitute treason to our village. Maybe you should consider moving on and focus more on your training together with Zenate Sama said Ino, expecting to be contradicted by the pink-haired Genin but instead Sakura just kept looking at Naruto and wondering what was in his mind right now. Was that the answer now, giving up? Truth be told Sasuke never bothered asking for help or anything, so why was she so persistent on bringing him back? 
She didn't know whether or not Naruto gave up on bringing him back. I don't know you know, I just don't know what to do. He always was distant to all of us, but as a team we managed to form a little bond between us. I will let the choice fall on Naruto. If he decides to go after him then I'll go with him, however if he decides to give up, then our bond is broken, and things will never be the same as it once was. I... Dot I think I'm going home now guys. I don't have the strength to hear what Naruto has to say yet said Sakura before moving towards the door. However, as she reached for the doorknob, a certain grumbling startled her and she turned to see Naruto just waking up and looking at the ones present. Hey, how long have you been here and why didn't you wake me up? Asked Naruto, eyeing everyone and waiting for a response. It was Shikamaru who explained that since he was sleeping, they didn't want to wake you up and how troublesome would be to do such a thing. Needless to say, Naruto dismissed the issue since it was pointless to comment further. So, how is everyone? Asked Naruto, though now the difference was plainly visible to all of them. Naruto's once crystal blue eyes now were like dark blue eyes and where he always smiled, now his face was akin to a bothered person. The group exchanged a few monologues like I'm fine and alright to which Naruto nodded and stretched a little bit. Sakura's here was pounding like crazy since she now would know about what happened with Sasuke and Naruto. However, she hesitated to come forward with the question, and that was pretty much visible. She secretly appreciated when Ino asked Naruto as to why he didn't want to see anyone right now. After hearing the question, Naruto explained his epiphany to everyone and also explained the book he was reading all night. Along the explanation, the group was stunned and now wondered what triggered him to think like this. When he was about to explain what happened, Shikamari stopped him saying that the details of said mission was considered restricted to Genin Ninja apart from those who participated in the mission to which Naruto acknowledged and stopped talking. Naruto heard about Sakura being apprenticed to Tsunade and congratulated her. However, everyone saw how Naruto addressed Sakura and all of them wondered where went that crush of the blonde. Sakura of course was the first to notice and that came somehow as a higher shock than Sasuke deserting the village. Sakura oftentimes found Naruto to be annoying asking to go out with her, but when he stopped doing it, she now missed it. Well, since Sakura will be training with Zenade, I guess I'm on my own then. Someone of Kakashi Sensei's caliber won't be held up to teach one single genin. No matter though, these books taught me a lot and I can't wait to leave this place and begin training said Naruto, taking his three books and laying them on top of his bed. The group though, wondered about Naruto's training, since all of them concurred with him about Kakashi. Little did the group know, that said person heard it all and sighed before turning to Jiria. Quite humble of him, wouldn't you say Kakashi? Quit worrying about it, when I'm through with him he'll be ten times stronger, trust me on this said Jiria to which Kakashi nodded and left. After seeing Kakashi leaving, Jiria turned to look at Naruto and wondered about a few things. I'm glad Naruto isn't fixed on rescuing the Uchiha boy. This way, his growth won't be hindered by simply overcoming the Uchiha. I guess my sensei days are up once again. Back to Naruto's room silence ruled the place. Sakura managed to ask Naruto of his intentions towards Uchiha Sasuke and he eyed Sakura with what seemed to be a sarcastic smile. Naruto thought quite a lot, but he acknowledged the fact that he didn't think of Sasuke at all, other than the fact that the Uchiha tried to kill him. Oh, he didn't need to think about it, since the answer was already clear in his mind however because of the secrecy towards the mission. He had to hide some aspects of what happened and focus more on Sasuke's reasons. Sakura in my opinion, you can't bring back someone who doesn't want to return. Sasuke left because he thought it would be better for him than staying in the village. Any missions towards rescuing him would turn to failure simply because he doesn't want to return, nor do I wish to go after him. Some aspects of the mission led me to believe that Sasuke was a loose cannon just waiting for a little push. So, I don't intend to go after him anytime soon, unless the Hokage orders me to do so explained Naruto before seeing Sakura lowering her head to looking towards the ground and left the room. She didn't expect Naruto's explanation to be so unnervingly accurate, and she found no counter-argument for him. The rest of the group wished him a good recovery, and all of them left. After that, Naruto picked up his last book about ninjutsu and turned to read it. 
Inside Naruto saw the three Academy Jutsus, and even some advanced ones to use like Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu and Bunshin Daibakyo Clone Explosion Jutsu. Also, he saw a technique called Jirai Shin no Jutsu Torpedo Needle Jutsu, and read about the technique. So far all of these techniques were relatively easy to do, since the first two required a technique similar to the Cage Bunshin, and the last one Naruto just had to mold Chakra correctly through a correct set of hand seals. However, the next ones were purely elemental jutsus and Naruto wouldn't be able to do since he didn't know how. Seeing the rest of the book was divided into elements, Naruto sighed and closed his book. He was going to leave it at the table in front of him when two papers fell on his lap. Lifting an eyebrow, Naruto picked them and saw that someone sent him a message. Naruto. I see you noticed that apart from some jutsus, this book contains mostly elemental jutsus. So, the next paper is a special one. This paper is what we use to determine a ninja's element. Every shinobi has a link towards a certain element which means that he or she will be able to perform jutsus towards that element easier than others. As you know or don't know, there are five elements fire, lightning, wind, earth and water. Therefore, by channeling chakra to this paper, you'll be able to find which element you are best suited with. After channeling chakra to the paper, the paper will either get soaked, water burn, fire, turns to dust, earth, crumble, lightning, or split in half wind. Kakashi. After reading it, Naruto turned to look at the paper and studied for a second. After a moment, he shrugged it off and did just like Kakashi's explanation said. He channeled chakra for a while, before he saw the paper splitting in half, indicating that he contained a wind affinity. Wind, huh? It's very rare to have such an affinity, Naruto said Kakashi earning the blonde's attention only to see that not only Kakashi was there as well, but also Jiria. What do you mean by saying rare, Kakashi-sensei? Asked Naruto to which Jiria chose to fill in for him. Since we're in fire country that means the majority of our shinobis possess a fire affinity, which is quite opposite to wind. Other affinities, although less common than fire, are also in abundance in Konoha like earth and water with lightning being second last and wind being last said Jiriya to which Kakashi nodded as well as Naruto. So that means any knowledge towards wind is limited in Konoha said Naruto, gaining nods from Kakashi and Jiriya. Truth be told, he didn't need much to work with anyway. His book explained about food and chakra control exercises, so the techniques he could learn from someone with knowledge in the area. Lifting his head once again to face his senseus, he wondered why Jiriya was there and not focusing on his research as he often did. Upon voicing it, Jiriya snorted at the blonde for his comment, but explained about the training trip. Needless to say Naruto was surprised upon seeing that he would leave the village for that long, but he wondered why he needed to get out of the village to which Jiriya explained that aside from training Jiriya would be protecting him from the Akatsuki, thus satisfying the blonde's curiosity. Truth be told Naruto wanted nothing more than train to correct his flaws and training under Jiryu would enable him time to correct them and also learn a lot. Jiryu explained that they would leave as soon as he was cleared from the hospital to which Naruto acknowledged it and appreciated the opportunity to train. After the Jounin and Sanin left the room Naruto picked up his book and turned to look at the Futen section and how to manifest Futen Chakra. Chapter 2 Promise of a Lifetime the next day Naruto had to say the stuff he saw on the ninjutsu book about food and ninjutsu and safe to say, he was really cursing himself right now. So much information kept hidden from him and only now did he choose to take a moment of his life to actually read. It was only after the nurse that checked on him came here to discharge him from the hospital that he took his clothes and left straight to a training ground where he could train and incorporate everything he learned through reading during his stay in the hospital. After all, Naruto didn't want to waste any more time than he already did. He now knew that in order for a shinobi to grow strong, he or she had to have the strength and will to never give up and always fight through numerous obstacles that appear through life. Immediately after arriving in one of Kanaha's many fields designated specifically for ninjas to train, Naruto went to one of the Teijutsu logs on the field and began to beat the hell of it by going through the katas that he learned from the book. Although he knew his form was still far from perfection, he also knew that Teijutsu required practice, so it wouldn't be possible for him to just read a book and immediately know how to do it. Nevertheless, he continued to beat the log in hopes of getting it right. After a while, he looked at his dirty hands and a few wounds from beating a log repeatedly, 
and remembered when Li was fighting Sasuke right at the beginning of the Chunnan exams. Closing his hands once again, forming fists, he looked once again the log and began once again the katas this time, adding some kicks as well. This time, however, Naruto found he was better than before, and he realized that Li was right. Only through harsh training can the ninja evolve. Stepping away from the log for a bit, Naruto began the katas on pure air, like he was in a showdown of martial arts. It wasn't as painful and Naruto could see that the speed of his movements was increasing periodically. It was only after two hours that he sit on the ground and looked up as the sunlight obscured his viewing for an instant. It went without saying that Naruto felt better than ever before. He felt like he already improved a little bit and now his taijutsu wouldn't be considered street fighting like Kakashi mentioned before. Getting up once more Naruto changed the subject and went to ninjutsu. The three jutsus he saw in the book were, in theory easy to do, but just like Teijutsu, one couldn't hope to master something just by reading it in a book. Picking one shuriken, he threw towards the log and Naruto made the hand seals necessary for shuriken cage bunch and no jutsu shuriken shadow clone jutsu however when approximately four shurikens should have appeared only two did instead, and none of them had the same properties as the original one. Such a result was expected since Naruto took close to an hour to master the cage bunch and no jutsu. This new technique didn't waste as much chakra the shadow clone, but it did require a considerate amount. Taking another one, he tried again, only for the same thing to happen. No matter though, he would be able to learn it just like he was able to do the cage bunchin. It took him 10 tries to be able to master the technique and the last one, he was able to create close to 10 clones of the shuriken, and all of them pierced the log in multiple locations thus completing the technique, but not without its price though as Naruto felt on the ground from slight fatigue. It didn't matter though, he did it just like he would complete the other two as well. However, his stomach growled hence why he grabbed some shurikens that was stick on the log, and went to Ikirakis for some lunch. Of course, he changed about the way he saw things, but that doesn't mean his taste for food changed. After setting down on the bench, Naruto asked for some miso ramen to which old man Tuki greeted him and went to make his bowl. As the noodles were being prepared, Tuki asked about Naruto's training with one of the Sanins, and congratulated the boy on the opportunity. Naruto appreciated, and said that he would be stronger, and don't waste more time than he already wasted for petty reasons. Tuki was confused at first, but waved it off seeing it was Naruto and Naruto was impossible to understand. After paying the old man, Naruto said to take care since he wouldn't come back for a while to which Tuki smiled, and wished the blonde a safe trip. Upon returning to the training ground, Naruto remembered the needed hand seals for the Duraishin no Jutsu Torpedo Needles Jutsu, and also the theory behind the technique. According to the book, the ninja must mold his chakra towards creating tons of thin layer shapes and then throwing it at the enemy. Of course, the book made it as easy as a simple henge, but the blonde knew better that chakra manipulation was a chunin level material. Nevertheless, he was committed to doing all three of the techniques before Jiryu could come to pick him up, so he immediately got to work. Little did he know though, that a few people were looking for the missing blonde. Equals 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 at the hospital equals equals equals. Jiryu Tsunade and Kakashi were standing in what used to be Naruto's room only to find it was empty. Naruto's clothes was gone too, except for his orange jacket which was tossed on the ground near the window thus showing them the obvious. The boy escaped the hospital, and now they have to find him. Tanade was furious at the head nurse for discharging the blonde, even after she made it clear that only she or Shizun were authorized for such a thing. Well, Jiryu, I guess you have to find your student out there. You and him are scheduled to leave tomorrow morning, so take your time, said Tanade before leaving the hospital room, thus leaving Jiryu and Kakashi inside. Where do you think he is right now, Kakashi? Asked Jiria, actually a little concerned with the blonde, since he didn't expect the damn imbecile to run off seconds after being released from the hospital. Kakashi for his part was reading his book and didn't pay attention to what the pervert was saying, earning a vein popping from the Sanin's forehead, who in turn sighed and shunshined out of the room. Seconds after, Kakashi lowered the book and activated his Sharingan to see if Naruto left a trail of chakra to follow. True to Kakashi's wonder looking at the window, Kakashi's Sharingan spotted Naruto's chakra as he jumped through the rooftops, heading to what appeared like a training ground a couple miles north. 
Smiling at the boy for pumping chakra to his legs and increases his speed, Kakashi started following the path Naruto took. He somehow knew that the blonde wouldn't take long before practicing what he learned, and he began to wonder if he perhaps, he should have done this a long time ago. If Naruto was already able to do one of the techniques on the book and settle for the right Taijutsu stance, Kakashi would have been wrong about the blonde. Truth be told, the Jounin always presumed Naruto would quit being a ninja, since he didn't have what it takes. However, as the time passed and Naruto was able to do stuff that no one would think it was possible. Learning the three steps to the racing gan in little more than a month was outstanding to say the least. The Yondime Hokage took three years to create it and Jiria one of the Sanin, took four months to learn. It was amazing that Naruto reduced that timing to only a month. Kakashi remembered seeing at the book he selected for Naruto regarding ninjutsu, and he remembered that apart from the elemental ones there were three jutsus that Kakashi would have wanted to teach Naruto, since it really matched Naruto's unpredictability attacks. Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsi, Shuriken Shadow Clone Bunshin Daibakyo Clone Explosion Jutsi and Jirai Shin Torpedo Needle. There were tough to master, but once he manages, he would be able to add three very powerful and very handy jutsus to his arsenal, not to mention the Futen techniques he would be learning with Jiryu on his travel. After the last rooftop Kakashi saw the blonde, and also managed to see that he was doing the Tatsi Dragon Seal, which was the last one needed for the Jirai Shin before Kakashi's eyes widened out of proportions. After Naruto finished the hand seal sequence, tons of chakra needles formed around him before Naruto moved his hands towards the Hitsuji Ram seal and shooting the needles forward the log, thus making tons of tiny holes which would kill any enemy easily. Kakashi wondered how much time Naruto was training, since the hour of his hospital release was three hours ago. Kakashi couldn't figure out how Naruto already learned this jutsu in three hours and thought about it for a while. How could someone with no good history at the academy learn advanced jutsus so easily? Would it be because he got the chakra capacity of a jounin? No, Jiryu already taught him the water walking exercise, so it couldn't be high chakra capacity. It was another thing, definitely was. Kakashi wondered if Naruto was a genius in disguise. But then again, he shouldn't be surprised at yet another surprising feat from Naruto. After completing the technique, Naruto kneeled on the ground from extreme chakra usage for the day. He cursed not having enough chakra to complete the third technique, but thought again since the bunch in Daibakyo required a lot of chakra at disposal and Naruto now didn't have enough. He figured that some rest would do the trick and his chakra would come back, so he just went to a tree nearby and sit down near it while admiring his work so far. His Taijutsu was coming along nicely, and he just added two new jutsus for him to rely on while fighting. The last technique, though, was what Naruto wanted to master the most for the simple reason of using it as a trap. Summoning a lot of cage bunchins and place some of the exploding ones in the middle so that when the enemy begins hitting them one by one, eventually he would be hitting the exploding one and would be sent flying because of it. Back to Kakashi. He was looking down at Naruto since the blonde happened to pick the same tree he was hiding in order to rest up a bit. At first, Kakashi considered just falling to the ground and greeting his student. However, for some reason, he hesitated. He didn't want to meet those same eyes he saw at the hospital. Kakashi just didn't have the words to talk to him right now. After all it was him the one who taught Sasuke the Kunari who in turn used it to pierce Naruto's flesh thus almost killing the blonde if the Kyubi wasn't inside him. The Jounin considered saying he regretted doing what he did, but he had a gut feeling that Naruto would close up once more and say it was alright with dejected eyes. One hour later, Naruto got up and felt that his chakra was beginning to fill him up. Albeit slowly so he decided to train more Taijutsu. So, he initiated the Katas as he beat up all the imaginary opponents in the air. Meanwhile, Kakashi was watching intently and also managing to see some nice punches going on down there, before seeing Naruto alternating between punches and kicks. Seeing the blonde training hard sent an unknown wave of pride to Kakashi that never before happened. When he trained Sasuke for a whole month, not one did the Uchiha cause that to Kakashi, but Naruto in less than a day, made Kakashi realize how deeply he messed up with the team. Suddenly someone instantly appeared behind Kakashi but he knew it wasn't Jiryu since his visible eye caught sight of green. Good afternoon my fellow rival, 
How about we took advantage of this beautiful day and test our abilities to the extreme? Yash screamed Guy before Kakashi placed his hand on Gay's mouth in time for Naruto to just look up, since he thought he heard someone screaming. After Kakashi signaled for Guy to be quiet, he looked down and saw that Naruto waved it off and returned to his Taijutsu training. Nato Guy turned to see what his rival was observing only to smile and give his thumbs up to Kakashi. Oh Kakashi, Naruto sure is filled with the fire of youth, he and student Lee are the same smiled guy as he saw Naruto's punches and kicks connect to the log repeatedly. Kakashi for his part thought about teasing the green Jounin, but he couldn't fault, but agree with his old friend. So, unlike any other precedent, Kakashi smiled and nodded. The green beast was astonished with the normal reply and wondered what was wrong with his once hip rival. However, before he could answer, Kakashi filled in the blanks. Naruto has a keen sense of never giving up, and he will use that to become stronger. He doesn't need me as his sensei for that mumbled Kakashi. Guy, for his part, understood what happened. He heard about what happened from his student Neji and thought about how unyoutful the Uchiha was for trying to kill his teammate with the technique Kakashi taught him. Did he learn that stance all by himself Kakashi? Asked Guy, clearly concerned for his rival's supposed lack of teaching skills. However, to his relief, Kakashi nodded his head in the negative and explained that he selected some books for Naruto to read while he was recuperating in the hospital, but Kakashi already knew where his rival wanted to go. I know what you're trying to do guy and I thank you for that, but all I ever did was show him the books to read, he was the one who draw the conclusions and you can see now how good he is on his own whispered Kakashi to which guy nodded and looked at Naruto once again who in turn was using both his fists to pound the log mercilessly and he remembered his student Lee doing the exact same thing. You know what Kakashi, I think you should go there and train him. He'll be with Doryu for a long time, and maybe you can at least help him with one technique. Well, I'm off to run some laps around Konoha, Yash screamed Guy before vanishing and leaving Kakashi alone to watch Naruto. He thought about what Guy said and wondered if really Naruto would be resentful to him now wanting to be a sensei to him. It's not that Naruto ever showed resentment at the Jounin, so what was he thinking that the blonde would blame him? Sighing in dismay Kakashi vanished a few meters away so that he could approach the blonde by walking casually. Equals 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 in Sinead's office equals equals equals. After trying to search for a little while, Daria was called by Sinead and now both of them began talking. The pervert explained about what he would be training Naruto in and how he would be power up his spirit and resolve enough to combat the Kyubi within his stomach. Tsunade nodded, but still was reluctant to let the blonde go. She didn't see the need to leave the village for training all that much but Jiryu was insistent saying that the Akatsuki would come for him when he's vulnerable hence why they need to stay on constant move. Tsunade also expressed her concerns about the blonde being too far behind his peers in terms of rank and that maybe he could go after the next Chumnin exams. Tsunade that kid has potential to come back as Jounin level, you know that. With his chakra potential and a few powerful techniques, there is no way he wouldn't be able to do the Chumnin exams once we come back. He is already fixing some minor issues that need to be fixed. It's just a matter of time until we'll begin elemental manipulation. I can tell you for sure that he is going to become as good as his father was, if not better. He learned the racing Gan in only a month, that's got to be saying something explained Jiriya to which Tsunade sighed and zipped some tea. Okay, he can go. But if I hear that you neglected him training for doing perverted activities, I'll make sure to beat you all the way to Iwa do you understand threatened Tsunade, earning a nod a gulp from the pervert. Now, you're not going to search for him? Asked the Hokage, looking at some scrolls before seeing the pervert shrugging his shoulders, saying that when the blonde was ready, he would appear to him, earning a nod from Tsunade. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. Back with Naruto, he was just finishing, beating the log mercilessly when he heard steps coming his way. He didn't want it to be Jiri since he wanted to finish the three techniques before leaving but it was already night time and still one was left. The sound of the steps was increasing until the figure finally revealed himself as Kakashi smiling. Hey Naruto, what are you up to? Asked the silver-haired Jounin. Naruto for his part smiled at seeing the man and said that he was practicing the Taijutsu and three Jutsus he learned from the book. 
The moon was already up the sky, and Kakashi was just watching Naruto pommel the log once more, until he came to a halt and looked to his beaded hands. He already had the chakra necessary to attempt the last jutsu, so he stopped and summoned one shadow clone, before Kakashi stopped him. Naruto, I think I know what technique you're trying to do, but with the clone so close, you could get caught in the explosion, send him a couple steps further and pump as much chakra as you can in one go that's the secret of the day back you taught Kakashi to which Naruto nodded and looked as the clone began walking a few steps before stopping and looking to the real one who in turn focused on the ram seal and immediately molded as much chakra as possible in one go. The clone was suddenly enveloped in a big explosion, thus completing the technique. Of course, Naruto's explosion wasn't as big as Itachi was, but it would certainly cause damage to the enemy. Kakashi smiled upon seeing that Naruto already managed to master two of the jutsus that he set for the blonde. Not to mention that the genin's teijutsu was now up to low chunin level. Looking back at Naruto, Kakashi saw that he was smiling, but the smile was different. This smile was a satisfied one, one that someone wears it upon being able to overcome an obstacle after failing a few times before. Upon asking though Naruto said that for a long time he thought he was doing fine as a shinobi, but now he saw that he was just being delusional about his abilities. Listen Naruto, seeing as you'll be gone for a long time, how about I buy you some ramen invited Kakashi, earning a nod from Naruto. Some minutes later, teacher and student each took a sit at the ramen stand and placed their respective orders. As they waited, Kakashi asked about how it was to travel and train with the Sanin. Naruto thought about it for a while, but in the end, he didn't have much to say other than the fact that the man would only teach him one time and leave him to practice. Naruto told him about the three stages of the race again, and how it was initially, weird to practice with water balloons and rubber balls. I just hope that this time he won't be focusing so much on peeping at girls all the time complained Naruto to which Kakashi smiled and nodded, before seeing their orders being placed in front of them. They ate the meal quietly while savoring the delicious noodles. For a while, no one talked, no one opened their mouth to speak, only to eat. When that was finished, Kakashi extended his dish so that the old man Tuki could pick up, before turning and addressing Naruto. Naruto, I'd like to say I'm sorry to you said Kakashi, coming forward with the subject earning a much surprised look from his student who in turn asked about what he was sorry about. Ever since Team 7 was formed, I didn't give the proper attention I should have done to the team, you specially. At the Chunnan exams, I ended up training someone who didn't need help and left you under the care of Ebisu. At the hospital when you asked me about your flaws, I felt ashamed, simply because as your Jounin sensei, I shouldn't be the one listing them, but rather working with you towards correcting them. I know that I wasn't the best sensei and for that I seriously apologize whispered Kakashi that last part before Naruto began looking at his sensei wondering what this all about. Was this guilt? Was this guilt for the Uchiha doing what he did? Naruto didn't forget that Sasuke tried to kill him with the technique Kakashi taught him, so it was really guilt over what he did and Kakashi felt responsible for what happened. Sensei, you don't need to apologize. No one could have known that Sasuke would eventually flee for power. Also, about my so-called flaws, what good is the sensei when the student doesn't understand what needs to be done? Those books you picked up for me helped understand what needed to be changed in my abilities and for that I thank you. Now not only I improved my teijutsu, but also just added three jutsus to use out there thanks to you once more explained Naruto, but Kakashi was still looking down when suddenly, he remembered hearing Naruto saying that he added three jutsus. Naruto, you were able to master the three jutsus? Asked Kakashi, incredulously, before Naruto nodded and finished up the last string of noodles. How many can you multiple the shurikens? Asked Kakashi once again. I managed ten clones the last time, though with more chakra the numbers can double explained Naruto, earning a nod from Kakashi and a thought that maybe Naruto was a genius in hiding. Furthermore, Kakashi asked some more questions about the techniques and the teijutsu to which Naruto responded, before the blonde said his goodbye since he was supposed to be packing his things for the trip tomorrow. Kakashi eyed the blonde leaving, and wondered how much better Naruto would be if Kakashi found out earlier about the blonde's quick learning. When he turned to walk away, he stopped for a while, before addressing the shadow to simply come out and talk to him. Ah Kakashi, I didn't want to intrude in student-teacher conversation, but Sanade-sama wants to talk to you immediately said the shadow before leaving. 
Once Kakashi arrived, Tsunade asked about Naruto's whereabouts. Kakashi said that he went to his apartment after training the whole day. According to Kakashi, Naruto managed to improve his Taijutsu form, and also the three jutsus that the book contained, aside from the elemental ones. Duryu was there as well, so you could imagine his surprise upon seeing that the blonde was also training ninjutsu. After hearing Kakashi's statement, Tsunade nodded, and took a scroll next to her. Kakashi tomorrow you'll part along with Genma and Reidu to a mission near Suna. The case Ich asked for help in pursuing a missing nin who managed to infiltrate the village, kill some of their ninjas, and steal some important documents. Sabaku no Temurai will be joining your group to arrest the man and retrieve the documents. Be ready to leave at 10 a.m. tomorrow ordered Tsunade, earning a nod from Kakashi before vanishing. Equals 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 inside Naruto's place equals equals equals. After already packing everything that he needed for the trip, plus some extra money to purchase some new clothing, Naruto was now just taking one last look at his place, before going to sleep. As to his clothes, he remembered some people saying ill about his clothes choice because they didn't offer him the necessary stealth that a ninja must have. So, Naruto made a mental note that the second he spots a place that sells ninja clothing, he would enter the place and change everything. Upon lying on the bed, Naruto noticed the kunai he leaves right next to him in case someone decides to break in and remembered that one last exercise was a do. The chakra control exercise was something he despised entirely. The tree walking one was easily the most unnerving one he ever had to do. After all, who in their sane consciousness would want to fall on their head so many times? Of course, Naruto didn't need to fall on his head simply because upon failing. He could simply flip his body and fall safely on his feet. The water walking one was also a pain in the ass. Naruto remembered that he kept falling on that hot water so many times, he didn't know he was wet from the water, or he was sweating from the heat. Now, this third one could shape to be just as troublesome as the two other, if not more. Maybe Naruto would use more chakra and send the kunai flying directly at him. Just as he took the kunai, he thought better and returned it to the proper place. His chakra system took a heavy blow today, and he wanted nothing more than simply sleep for a while. It wasn't long until his mind started playing tricks on him, which meant that just like every night he fell asleep, he was having a nightmare. Usually, it was just memories of people looking at him with disdain and anger, nothing that he couldn't handle in time, thus didn't bother his sleep. However, this one was different, or at least started out differently. He was inside a dark room, where inside he couldn't say a thing except for a bed that was illuminated. As he walked closer, he noticed that a boy closer to his age was there sleeping with his face looking up. Upon approaching, the person's identity was plainly visible to Naruto. The cursed seal on his neck was glowing with intensity, but instead of reaching Sasuke to see if he was alright, Naruto just stood there impassively. Suddenly Orochimaru appeared next to Sasuke and extend two white snakes around Sasuke's body slowly taking possession of his body. Orochimaru stopped for a while and watched Naruto to see if he would do something to stop the snake face, but Naruto just remained there stoically, watching as Orochimaru managed to complete his possession of the Sharingan, before transforming into a monster and began his havoc and mayhem. Suddenly in front of Naruto, appeared Sasuke once again looking at him demanding answers about why Naruto let Rochimaru take over his body. The answer, though was an easy one to make. Clearly you didn't expect me to help you after you tried to kill me didn't you traitor? Asked Naruto before seeing Sasuke's spirit leaving while looking at the blonde's eyes without uttering a single word in response. After Sasuke was gone Naruto turned to look at Orochimaru who in turn was looking at him while laughing evilly before preparing a racing gan in his right hand and charged Orochimaru before slamming the racing gan right between his eyes. The next scene was Naruto's room as he opened his eyes to administer what he just pictured inside his mind. He just saw Orochimaru completing his ambition before Naruto was able to land a racing gan between his eyes. What the dream mean? Of course, Naruto didn't care much for Sasuke, but he wouldn't let Orochimaru do what he intends to do, simply because he is an enemy of the village and therefore cannot let him live. So maybe the dream was what the future could entail in case Orochimaru manages to take possession of Sasuke's Sharingan. Closing his eyes once more, he fell asleep with those thoughts in mind, and only one conclusion. He would protect the village even if it costs his life to do so.
equals 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 day of departure equals 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 after saying goodbye to his friends he and Jiryu marched together towards the main gate therefore beginning their adventure across the elemental countries after the last step naruto stopped and turned to look at the hokage monument especially at the fourth hokage's head i'll come back stronger and protect the village just like you did with your life that's a promise screamed Naruto to no one until Jiryu screamed for him to hurry up or else he would leave without him. Chapter 3 True Devotion A few hours after leaving the village, Jiryu and Naruto were found walking casually towards a small village in order to have some lunch and talk for a while. Suffice to say Jiryu wanted to talk with Naruto, not only because he wanted to create a suitable schedule for the blonde's training but also in order to find out as much as possible about the eternal enigma that was Izumaki Naruto. In their last trip, Jiryu was practically begging for Naruto to stop screaming from time to time, but now the blonde didn't matter a single word since they left Konoha. Naruto, for his part, chose the quiet time and began to wonder about things a little bit. He often wondered about his life, and how it could turn up if he had the decency to apply himself on being a better ninja. Of course, he felt stronger and more capable now, but Naruto couldn't help but think about what would happen if he was better trained. Surely, he would do better in missions and maybe overcome the Uchiha in battle because of it. Naruto was not stupid enough to realize that he just learned three advanced jutsus in only a day, therefore it was safe to say he could be already proficient in Fudan ninjutsu by now. I surely messed up with my training no matter though, I'll have three years to make up for the lost time, and hopefully become strong enough to be of aid to the village, thought Naruto as he looked up only to see that they were approaching a small village. Naruto, why don't we stop here for some lunch, I bet you're hungry offered Jiryu earning a nod from Naruto who appreciated the offer and said that his feet was already hurting from that much walk. Jiryu couldn't help but laugh upon eyeing his new student's determination. Another aspect of Jiryu's concern was towards Naruto maybe becoming respectful for a change, he did insist for the blonde to address him with respect, however a part of him wanted to be called Aero Senen. A few moments later Naruto and Jiryu were having some sushi and Jiryu chose that moment to talk to the blonde. Oh Naruto, as you know we'll have three years to spend on your training and I expect that in the end of this three years your level would be somewhat close to Jounin said Jiryu, earning a look in surprise from Naruto who thought he heard that Jiryu wanted him to be close to Kakashi's level upon returning. That's right kid. You are already close to Chunin material and as I remembered carefully you did beat that Neji kid, who was considered the genius of the Hayiga clan and you saved Konoha from the one-tailed beast Shikaku. Now, stop interrupting me and let's get down to business stated Jiryu to which Naruto rolled his eyes away before eyeing the pervert once more. Based on the material I've gathered on your file your Teijutsu is now, after you left the hospital more refined so it is considered low-level Chunin. However will sure improve this area. Genjutsu, I'm sorry to say your ability is practically none. However I'm sure that learning Genjutsu wouldn't suit your fighting style, so we'll focus on learning to interpret the illusion and how to dispel them effectively. Chakra control won't be much of an issue here in our training, since you already completed the tree and water walking. Explained Jiryu, but Naruto stopped him for a second. What about the kunai lifting exercise? I saw that this is the third level of chakra control, asked Naruto, earning a thinking pose from Jiria. The kunai lifting exercise, although completely useful, wasn't obligatory for a ninja to complete. This exercise was only completed by those of the Hayiga clan in order to learn the Jiakin, and for medical ninja to be able to learn their techniques. This exercise required a steady flow of chakra to be expelled from the ninja's hands, thus keeping the kunai hovering around. Although it's nice to be able to Naruto, truth is it isn't a necessary skill to have, especially for someone more suited for Teijutsu and Ninjutsu such as yourself. If you truly wish to learn, we'll leave it for the end of our training also if you wish you could attempt on one of our free times. Moving on, Ninjutsu and Chakra Capacity. The latter is rather easy to train since you only need to use a lot of chakra and then wait for your reserves to be fulfilled again, now Ninjutsu said to Ryu before seeing Naruto smile which in turn caused him to smile in return. As you know, Ninjutsu are mostly divided between shape and element manipulation with a few exceptions that doesn't rely on them. 
Yu already is proficient in shape manipulation from the racing gan and the Jirai Shin no Jutsu torpedo needles Jutsu however we are still due to perfect your racing gan. Also, we'll be focusing on your Futen element, I happen to know the formula necessary to be able to use Futen chakra, and also some techniques that will be easy to teach. I happen to have a friend in Suna that happens to be a Jounin, he will teach you 2 to 3 advanced Futen techniques, but the rest will be up to you explain Jiria. Also, it will be up to you to figure out our schedule, he he he. You'll have to come up with a suitable timetable that will incorporate all of the subjects we talked so far. After hearing that, Naruto was rather angry to say the least. Duryu was supposed to be the teacher and yet he was stuck with fixing the training schedule, it was ridiculous. Duryu explained that such abilities are vital in the ninja world, and would help Naruto greatly while going on more advanced missions, or even leading a team. After paying for the meal Duryu left Naruto at the local library in order to think of the schedule, while he would do some researching. Naruto didn't complain. But he knew of the damn pervert's reasons for leaving, and wondered if the damn pervert would do this more often in the future. Looking at the blank page for a moment, Naruto decided to settle down everything he needed to place at the schedule and list it down. After finishing it, he proceeded to think. The old Naruto would settle for three whole years of badass ninjutsu and cool moves, but now after what he saw in those books, the blonde realized that he needed to pay attention to his other skills. Three years and three abilities to focus on, Teijutsu, Genjutsu, and Ninjutsu. Also, Ninjutsu would be divided into three phases using the racing gan with one hand learning Futen Chakra and learning Futen techniques. Teijutsu and Genjutsu didn't need a full year, Naruto wondered. Of course, he could learn more advanced dances in probably six months, and then do some occasional spars with Jiria. Also Genjutsu disrupting wouldn't require much time to learn so maybe he could assert both Teijutsu and Genjutsu within a full year of training. Well, I guess we could focus on these two arts as well as doing some chakra control exercises. Thought Naruto as he began scribbling on the paper, the following. First year, six months of Teijutsu and chakra control exercises, extended periods of running on top of water, and maybe even doing occasional spars to increase the pace. Naruto really wanted to learn some new ninjutsu, but then the ones he already knew could need some time mastering it. The Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu Shuriken Shadow Clone was one of them and Naruto always wanted to see a suitable number of Shuriken clones to be created for the technique to be effective. Also, the Jirai Shin no Jutsu Torpedo Needles Jutsu could need some work refining its shape, and also increasing the number of needles, so he could use the first year perfecting them on his spare time from training. The Bunchen de Bakula clone explosion only needed more chakra burst, so Naruto didn't need to train that. Scribbling this information, Naruto now initiated the second year schedule. Since he would have practically done with Teijutsu and Genjutsu, he could focus two years with Ninjutsu. Sometime in the past, he heard someone telling that he was a Ninjutsu type of ninja because of his unlimited chakra capacity. So, with the proper control and the advanced techniques, he was sure to learn Naruto was practically drooling in anticipation. Nevertheless, he needed, before learning any other jutsu to use the racing gan in one hand, so he settled for three months exclusively for the racing gan. After that, Jiryu would be teaching him how to have access to Futen Chakra. However, Naruto was clueless as to how much time it would be required to do this. The part of the book didn't say much about it, so he settled for taking the rest of the year for such a feat, after all, in case he manages to learn before the end of the second year, maybe he could focus on other abilities. Looking at the paper, he turned to scribble once more. Second year three first months, racing Gan training in order to be able to create it single-handedly without the clone's assistance, and nine months of food and chakra manifestation training, in case I manage to do it in lesser time, we can focus on learning one or two food and techniques and spar on top of the water using both Teijutsu and Ninjutsu objective, fighting experience and mastery of Jutsus in the heat of battle. Of course, the third year would be focused on food and techniques that Naruto would be learning from both Jiria and a man in Suna. So, he scribbled the last year and turned to read it once more in order to see if he didn't miss anything. Naruto was actually satisfied with his schedule. Truth be told, the schedule was a good idea, since it would keep not only him in place, but also for his perverted sensei. Leaving the paper on top of the table for a moment, Naruto began to look around a bit. 
This wasn't a shinobi library, hence why he couldn't pick anything that would interest him. However, they did have some adventure books to read and Naruto knew he would have to wait a while for Jiryu to arrive. Upon arriving at the respective section, he glanced at the titles, and was surprised to see that some of the books involved the shinobi world, even if all of them are fiction. He took a few ranging from Kiri Shinobi's war against pirates to an adventure between two powerful warriors in Iwa battling for the Tsushikage position. After picking them, he went to the table he was seating earlier and placed the books on top of the table. Picking the first book which was actually the one that described Kiri's war against the pirate organization, he opened and started reading. Equals 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 with Jiryu equals equals equals. After leaving Naruto alone at the library, Jiryu decided to run into an old friend of his that happened to leave at the village. Actually, the reason Jiryu stopped by was because this man contacted him a while ago because of some sensitive information about Suna. Jiryu had informants up there, but couldn't just dismiss information like that, especially because this man wasn't limited to sensitive information, and could easily tell more. After a while of walking, he reached a normal two-story white house and knocked on the door. It took some minutes before the door opened, although just a little for the man inside to see who was knocking. You appear like him, but how do I know you're really him? Asked the shadow, burning a snort from the perf. Really must every informant of his ask that question? True, it was shinobi protocol to be certain of the one in front of him, before opening his mouth. Before one became his informant, Jiryu would say a secret password that only he could know. Orochimaru is a pedophile muttered Jiryu, earning a nod from the man before he fully opened and greeted the white-haired Sanin. Clearly, Orochimaru has been given many names and curses, but only Jiryu would call him like that. Seriously, I think I earned your trust enough, so that you shouldn't feel the need to have a double check said Jiryu, earning a snicker from the man. Well, one couldn't help but keep a few vices, besides it's better to be assured than be stabbed in the back. Come and gestured the man to which Jiryu muttered something unyoutful, and then entered the house. The inner walls were rather simple, but what could anyone expect from a ninja's retirement home? Nakato Shinji was really an ordinary shinobi. Retiring early because of losing one of his arms while on a mission, he decided to leave the village and settle down in a village where he wouldn't hear the word ninja. However, just as the man said, Shinji became addicted to some of the vices that were exclusive for Shinobi hence why he agreed to be Jiryu's informant. So, I believe you have something to tell me, so let's hear it said Jiryu, earning a nod from Shinji who began. I have news of Suna. Apparently, they took Orochimaru's betrayal pretty heavily and are now restructuring everything. I heard from a Suna ninja that they have plans of formulating a mutual agreement with Konoha in order to exchange knowledge regarding genin training and the Academy of Shinobi wannabes. Also, there is a rumor of a nomination for the Godain Keisuke, although he couldn't confirm me the nominee's identity explained Shinji, earning a nod in appreciation from the Sanin. Although it wasn't urgent news, Jiryu was famous for knowing pretty much everything about everything. He knew of Suna's growing interest in allying once again with Konoha for the famous mutual benefits. The news of the new Keisuke, though was unexpected since because of the Yondime Keisuke's death, the council took over everything until a next suitable shinobi becomes nominated for the Godain Keisuke. Jiryu thanked the man for the information and gladly accepted some tea that Shinji just now made. Some occasional talk was exchanged between the two, and when Jiryu looked at the time he realized he abandoned Naruto at the library for close to three hours now. He explained to Shinji that he was in a hurry to meet someone and appreciated the hospitality. After leaving the house, he took a few minutes to arrive at the library, already wondering how much of a headache he will have from hearing Naruto screaming at him for abandonment. What he never expected, though, was to see Naruto, instead of either falling asleep or bitching to someone about late Sensius. The blonde was there seated at the table reading a book and Jiryu could see three other books on top of the table as well. I don't know if I should be relieved that he won't scream at me or worried of seeing Izumaki Naruto, the most hyperactive ninja of Konoha and Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Yoko, expending pretty much half a day at the library, thought Jiryu as he took the paper and turned to read it. First year, six months of Taijutsu and chakra control exercises, extended periods of running on top of water, and maybe even doing occasional spars to increase the pace. 
mastery of two ninjutsus learned before leaving, which are the following Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu and Duraishin no Jutsu and the rest of the year will be spent on Genjutsu understanding plus how to disrupt the illusion. Second year three first months, racing Gan training in order to be able to create it single-handedly without the clone's assistance, and nine months of food and chakra manifestation training, in case I manage to do it in lesser time, we can focus on learning one or two food and techniques and spar on top of the water using both Teijutsu and Ninjutsu objective, fighting experience and mastery of Jutsus in the heat of battle. Third year, mainly food and Ninjutsu training with Duryo and a ninja from Suno, followed by full-out spar involving Nin, Tai and Genjutsu three times a week, until the last two months which will be used for eventual exercises that I couldn't master in time. Duryu couldn't help but smile upon reading it. There were some points missing, however he was still due to tell Naruto that on time, he would be set up against other opponents in order to have some battle experience. Still, the schedule layout worked fine and Duryu found that the time given for all of them were spot on. Naruto for his part finished his book and looked at the pervert displaying a large smile on his face. I suppose that since you're smiling is because you approved my schedule. Asked Naruto, before earning a nod from his now sensei. Indeed. I first thought you'd put three whole years of ninjutsu, but then I guess you are now a changed shinobi. The schedule is great and we can begin right away. Since the sun is still up, we'll use it to test your skills so far. We'll find a clearance for us to have a spar so I can gauge what you need correcting. Let's go said Jiriya to which Naruto nodded before getting off the chair and following the pervert. It was only when they left the library that Naruto remembered something. What took you so long, Aero sensei Asked Naruto, earning a sigh in dismay from the change in names. Well, at least he placed the word sensei in it. I went to find a friend of mine who contacted me for some information. Stated Jiriya equals 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 a few miles away from the village equals 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 once out of the village Jiria and Naruto found a clearing before they sealed their belongings inside a scroll by Jiria after all it wouldn't do well for them to leave it next to a tree and have it stolen in the midst of a fight all right Naruto come at me with everything you got but mind you I'm not just standing here waiting for the attack so be prepared said Duryo before already beginning a set of hand seals before whispering Sutan Suaryuin no Jutsu water release, water dragon Jutsu. Instantly from a lagoon nearby, the dragon suddenly emerged and attacked Naruto, who was frightened to death upon hearing the dragon roaring. The blonde realized, though, that he had to face the danger and used some chakra to jump at the last minute thus evading the technique. He charged Ryu once again adding chakra to his feet for an upgrade in speed, before reaching and aiming the man's chest. Ryu used his hand to block Naruto's kick and used the other arm to punch the blonde's ribs, but barely missed, since Naruto bended his body a little bit. After falling Naruto did some backflips and jumped a little higher before taking some shurikens and throwing at Ryu before making hand seals for shuriken cage bunch and no jutsu shuriken shadow clone. Duryu was impressed upon seeing the four shurikens become 40, and made some hand seals of his own. Dotan Doryaki, Earth Release, Mud Wall Jutsu. Still in the air, Naruto saw the wall being formed and saw all the shurikens being blocked, before cursing at the man's elemental jutsus. Charging once again, Naruto went up the earth wall, using chakra since he couldn't see where Duryu was. Inside the protection Duryu smiled at the blonde's insight. The earth wall technique had a weakness of blocking the user's sight, thus Jiriya couldn't see the blonde, but he heard the sound of steps, so he just connected the dots. Looking up he saw as Naruto jumped the wall and made some hand seals before chakra spikes appeared around him. With Naruto's shift of seals, the needles charged forward and pierced Jiriya like a pin cushion. Naruto actually believed he accidentally killed the pervert when he saw said man to his right, aiming a kick at his side stomach thus sending the blonde flying. Using the momentum Naruto made a spin and landed safely on the ground, before he eyed Jiryu for a while. The pervert for his part jumped and landed right in front of Naruto while looking at him. Very good Naruto, your ninjutsu was surely flawless although in the midst of battle, you need to increase the speed in which you make the hand seals. However that will come with experience your taijutsu although good needs some correction in terms of defensive katas. At some point there, you left your guard open, and that is unacceptable. Overall though, you did pretty good said Jiryu, earning a thanks in appreciation from the blonde. After a while, 
the two were already marching towards the next village in order to get some sleep. On the way though Naruto was picturing his fight and smiled. Of course, Furia was fighting with at least 5% of his abilities, but that was considered high genin level so if Naruto was on pair with the Sanin using 5%, then perhaps Furia was right about him being low chunin level. Still Naruto couldn't help but remember the pervert using both Sutan and Dotan and wondered about each ninja's affinity. Aero sensei How come you were able to use more than one element? I thought each ninja had one affinity asked Naruto, earning a smile from Jiria. It's true that the majority of ninja has only one affinity. However there are exceptions out there that have two. However, that does not mean you couldn't learn jutsus from other elements, the tricky part is that would be more difficult, and more chakra demanding than the element you're aligned with. For example, I have a doton affinity, but I also can use suton, katan and a couple futon techniques explained Jiryu, earning a nod in surprise from Naruto. However, since your schedule is done, we'll focus on Teijutsu and Genjutsu this year, plus some occasional spars with either myself or others. As Jiri talked, Naruto looked at him explaining, and felt something different from the pervert. It certainly was different from the Jiri he traveled to find Tsunade. Speaking the truth, Jiri was feeling rather nostalgic about teaching another blonde in the past, and he couldn't help but look at the sky and speak to the clouds to his deceased student. Minato, Naruto truly is your son. Equals 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 Tanzaki guy equals equals equals. After another hour of casual travel Naruto and Jiri arrived at Tanzaki guy before quickly renting a room for two days. On the way, Jiri explained that they wouldn't be more than a week in one place even if nobody would be around to see them. The reason behind this was to avoid unwanted attention and alerting Akatsuki of their presence. After all, one of the objectives of this training period is to avoid bumping into one of their members while on a random mission. After that, Jiri said for Naruto that he would be meeting another friend before giving his giddy smile, showing to the blonde that he would be peeping around the place for a while. Sighing in dismay, Naruto said that he would wander around town for a while and maybe have some dinner. Jiri wondered for a moment before shrugging it off and left the hotel as well. Since Naruto left his height I ate inside the room, there wasn't much worry in him walking around for a while. After all, simply waiting inside the room wouldn't please anyone. The sun was just setting and the village nights were beginning to appear. In minutes, the entire village was surrounded by festival lights since the whole city was one. Millions of merchants would come here with the opportunity of sealing their products to the population. As Naruto wandered around, he could see many little stores going from restaurants to shinobi games. However, Naruto was actually looking for a place that sells ninja clothing. However that could wait, after all. His stomach pretty much begged him to have something to eat, so he went to a ramen stand and asked for three bowls of miso ramen. While nothing compared to Ikiraku's, this one was rather good, Naruto thought. He appreciated the food and then paid for it, before leaving and searching around town for a while. It wouldn't be possible for this village not to have a shinobi store, however Naruto was wandering for a while and was practically giving up the search, and returned to the hotel when he spotted what he was looking for. Once inside, Naruto blinked several times and then blinked once more. The store was huge in every sense of the way. The reason for Naruto's surprise was that it didn't look his bid from the outside. Looking around, he saw a bunch of cool stuff like weapons, ceiling scrolls, survival kits. Everything a ninja wanted, he could get in here. Eventually, he found the clothes section and quickly began to look at the samples. He was searching for something neutral, although more for the dark side. Obviously, he would get some dark paints and maybe something with a few pockets for him to store. Once the pants were chosen, Naruto went for the shirts. He remembered thinking about buying neutral colors like gray, or even a much darker shade of the color. Searching for a while, he found what he was searching for a dark gray shirt with no drawings or engravings of any kind, being perfect for his idea. Upon selecting other dark colors such as dark green and a brown one, he went to the counter and asked for three pairs of the paints he selected and if possible, engraved the shirts with the whirlpool symbol on his back, although now instead of orange, or red I don't remember Naruto wanted it all black. The attendant smiled at him and told him to wait while she would go to the back and start with the order. Meanwhile, 
Naruto decided to take a look at the sword's weapons. He wasn't look forward to studying Kenjutsu anytime soon, but the swords in display were nothing short of amazing. There were some of them who had engravings added to the hilt, and Naruto's creative mind was already picturing his engraved with the whirlpool symbol. For some reason, though Naruto felt attached to that symbol, although it wasn't Kanaha's symbol per se. After a while, the woman arrived with Naruto's orders and gave him the price for the whole thing. Grabbing the money he separated, he turned to look at some gloves that happened to possess metallic knuckles. Needless to say, he bought them as well. After appreciating for the service, Naruto left the shop towards the hotel. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. After doing his routine, Naruto was already outside the village wandering around for Jiryu who in turn was still due to show his face. Looking around Naruto suddenly was feeling a little bit unnerved by so many people staring at him. The stare itself didn't bother him, since he was used to it back at his home village. The problem now, was that the people who stared at him were composed of only women and girls, and the look of their face was similar to the looks that the damn traitor received back in Konoha. Suddenly it clicked on him. Naruto decided to wear his new clothes today, and while he thought he looked good on the mirror, he clearly didn't expect to attract this sort of attention. Wandering around some more, until he saw the Sanin sitting on the ground, near what seemed to be an abandoned house, and sighed in dismay. Damn. We're only started this trip, and the damn pervert already passed out drunk. Thought Naruto as he approached Jiryu for a while. Oh the ideas he had for a good prank. Naruto's prankster side, oftentimes took over his will. Summoning close to ten cage bunchins, all of them gathered air in their lungs before screaming, Wake up, Aero sensei Jiryu jumped nearly an instinct, and when he noticed where he was he could already see the entire village under him, before he fell at the same place he was before. Scratching his head for a while, Jiryu looked around while feeling his head pounding like crazy. It wasn't enough for him to feel a hangover, now Naruto screaming at his ear would forever plague his mind as the worst headache ever. As he opened his eyes, his vision was somewhat blurry, and he was seeing a blurry vision of a blonde in black paints and gray shirt looking at him. Wow, I must be seeing things I swear I just saw Minato looking at me with those same angry eyes. Damn you Naruto. You look so much like your parents, it's kind of scary. Oh why the hell did you do that for brat? I was trying to sleep here shouted Jiryu to which Naruto rolled his eyes and looked at the messed state of the man in front of him. You are the one to blame for this arrow sensei. You ask for respect and yet you sit in the middle of the street. Completely drunk muttered Naruto, earning a snore in complaint. But Jiryu stopped the discussion from fear of his head exploding. I really need to stop drinking so much thought Jiria as he walks towards a bakery and asked for some bread and water to ease the headache. After that, he looked at the blonde and now realized that his clothes were different now. Interesting choice in clothes you got there Naruto. It fits you actually said Jiria, actually meaning that he was glad that he didn't have to force the blonde to lose the orange clothing. Upon looking at the back of the shirt, Jiryu was surprised to see a black whirlpool symbol attached to the fabric, instead of the usual one that is located behind his orange jacket. Also, now we can train your stealth abilities, since we don't have to worry about you being discovered in the middle of the forest because of your orange clothing. What did you do with it anyway? Asked Jiryu to which Naruto answered that he simply threw it away, and then turned his back to Jiryu, not really wanting to deal with Jiria in this stage right now. Jiria for his part rose from the ground, and looked at the blonde in front of him. Aero sensei, since you'll be recovering in the hotel, can I go train a little bit? Asked Naruto, earning a surprised look from Jiria who in turn wondered why the sudden rush in getting stronger. Naruto, we have three years ahead of us to do that. We should consider resting a bit said Jiryu, but stopped when Naruto turned his head and looked at Jiryu with eyes that astonished the Sanin. Jiryu could see the pure eye of determination, eye of devotion towards an objective, whatever it was. I have to become stronger in order to protect Konoha and for that, resting will come last stated Naruto, earning a sigh in dismay from Jiryu who was imagining three years of constant movement and training regimes. Jiryu woke from his wonderings when he saw Naruto began walking away from him, before he called for him to halt, and wanted to talk to him. 
Naruto stopped and looked at Toriyu who stopped running and landed a hand on his shoulder. Naruto, I know you want to protect the village and those you care for and believe me when I say you'll become a great shinobi. I'll be recovering a bit at the hotel, but I'll set you up with a couple of stamina exercises mixed with teijutsu practice that will put you up to test. Extend your arms for me, if you may said Doryu, before Naruto did as instructed. Focusing some chakra on his fingers Doryu began to draw two seals one in each of Naruto's arms before closing his eyes and focusing on activating it. Ready to go, these seals are called restriction seals, and what they do is make it heavier for you to move at will. For the remaining of the month, you will become adjusted to it as we practice these stamina exercises. Now, a complete lap around Tanzaku Gai takes about half an hour mostly. So, begin with five laps around the village, then practice your teijutsu until I arrive understood explained to Ryu, before Naruto nodded eagerly to begin before running towards the village exit. However, he found out how the seal operated, and it was tough to say the least. But he went nonetheless and Jiryu smirked at the sight of Minato's training. Wait, no. This is Naruto, not his father. I got to sleep a little bit. And definitely cannot call him Minato. Oh my friend, your son looks so much like you, it's really scary sometimes. Back to Naruto, he was already on his way towards the fist lap around the village while wondering about the effects of the seal located in both his arms. He could already imagine how much these exercises could improve not only his body mass, but also the strength behind his teijutsu attacks. Not only that, but while adjusting to the restriction of the seal Naruto could also improve his speed. Aero Sensei is a genius. Chapter 4 Racing Gan Training It had been two weeks since that day Naruto was introduced to the restriction seals and his physical skills greatly improved. He and Drea was found heading towards river country in hopes of training below a waterfall. Drea instructed Naruto that learning how to meditate can increase the ninja's perception of things both outside and inside his body. For instance, by meditating Naruto could have more access to his chakra and learn how to ease his chakra flow inside his chakra coils. Back to Naruto's physical skills, he was able to gain some muscles from constantly using them to be able to move. Naruto learned by pure experience how the restriction seal worked. As Naruto walked, the air would reach the seal and it would increase the air force around the blonde's body, thus making it harder to move his limbs. At the time Naruto compared it like trying to move in the water, which Dre couldn't agree more to. The restriction seal was created by the Yandime Hokage in response to the gravity seal that was called a Kinjutsu because of the damage it did to the human body. This new one acted more directly towards a ninja's training, and, unlike the gravity seal, it didn't overstrain the muscles and organs. Some minutes later, the two of them saw the many number of waterfalls that made River Country famous. Naruto, there are a lot of inns here in River Country so we'll just settle in and proceed with what I intended for you. Said Drea earning a nod from Naruto who in turn extended his hand before focusing chakra on rotation. The energy began to gather around his hand, but dissipated seconds afterwards. Even if the racing Gan training was only due to happen the next year, Naruto decided to give it a shot while on their travels around the elemental nations. Drea saw it and smiled at the blonde's better attempt this time. Since he began to try the racing Gan single-handedly, Naruto has improved a lot. The first time, he couldn't even begin the energy rotation. Now, that part was already through and now Naruto needed to maintain the rotation steady before beginning to focus on the power. In time, you'll manage the race and gan Naruto. Now, we'll settle inside an inn and head straight for the nearest waterfall said Drea as Naruto nodded before both settled inside for a while. This place would serve as training place for both Teijutsu and increasing Naruto's chakra control seeing as they would both practice Teijutsu on top of the lake. Aero Sensei, do you have any non-elemental jutsus that you could teach me? Asked Naruto which make Drea think for a while. There is one defensive jutsu I invented, but for I'm afraid you won't be able to do this one. The technique is called Nimpuhari Jaizu, Ninja Art, Underworld Guardian Spikes, and is a defensive jutsu and consists of focusing chakra through your hair, and to sharp its edges before covering your whole body with it. In a Teijutsu match, once you do this, if the opponent is stupid enough to hit you, will be stabbed because of the hair spikes. However, I'm able to do this because my hair is long enough, while yours is not. 
explained Rhea, earning a nod from Naruto, who then proceeded to find a way out of this predicament. If I were to focus more chakra than the technique normally requires then maybe I wouldn't need to grow my hair? What are the hand signals needed for it? Asked Naruto to which Drea smiled and showed him the technique, or at least which hand seals were needed. When Naruto attempted his hair immediately became more sharpened, but instead of covering the whole body, Naruto's hair only managed to cover his head and his chest before dissipating the technique. Drea was impressed nonetheless. On his first attempt the blonde already managed to sharpen the hair enough to create needles and with enough practice and more chakra Naruto would be able to do the technique without having the need to grow his hair. This technique though, had a slight outcome of growing the hair at an accelerated pace. Upon voicing it to Naruto just shrugged it off saying that he would worry about it later on. After a while the two settled inside the inn and then went to the nearest waterfall, once they're both immediately jumped and began battling each other in mid-air, before landing on the water. Practicing Taijutsu on the water was good for two reasons. First of all, it would be a great help to increase chakra control because Naruto would have to focus on maintaining the chakra flow below his feet while fighting against Drea and the second reason is Taijutsu experience. After watching each other for a while, Naruto channeled chakra to his legs and charged Drea with a roundhouse kick to which Drea used his arms to block it and then aimed a straight punch to Naruto's chest. Seeing the move Naruto flipped his body while in mid-air and grabbed Drea's arm before pushing it away from the direction of this chest. After landing once again on the water, Naruto charged once more this time with a series of punches. As Drea was blocking them, he smiled seeing that not only his speed between movements increased, but also the fact that Naruto was landing some heavy blows. In enough time, the pervert wouldn't need to worry about holding back in a straight taijutsu fight, and that was saying something. Drea flipped his body for a reverse kick straight to Naruto's face, but the blonde did a backflip and evaded the attack before aiming for a low kick straight to Drea's legs. Jumping Drea thought to test the Gaki's evasive techniques by making some hand seals for Katan Hausenka no Jutsu Fire Release, Mythical Fire Phoenix Jutsu. Instantly, Drea expelled consecutive two-feet fireballs at Naruto who in turn cursed his sensei for using ninjutsu before focusing chakra in his feet and started running. The fireballs were hitting the water inches from Naruto's position so the pace would have to be increased. Managing to steadily dodge the incoming fireballs, Naruto had to think of something to turn the odds. Looking at Drea, he managed to see a log that was floating behind him, giving him the perfect tactic to get Drea. Upon seeing the last fireball, he ran straight to it not bothering to hear Drea's protest of stupidity. The fireball engulfed him completely, until Naruto was suddenly replaced by a log. The pervert was dead silent and wondering what was going on until he turned around only to see Naruto's foot landing a straight kick on his face thus sending him down. Looking at the blonde, Drea couldn't help but applaud the blonde for the deceiving tactic. Even in the middle of a tight situation, the blonde had managed to calm down and think of a way through it. Congrats Naruto, although don't ever do such a crazy maneuver like that, unless you're absolutely sure you'll be able to complete it. Remember, I've seen ninjas dying because they attempted something new in the midst of battle. Remember always to use the skills you're most experienced with, and you'll have a higher chance of winning the battle. Now, proceed with some taijutsu against your clones, and then we'll begin our meditation exercise. Explained Drea, earning a nod from Naruto before he summoned four clones, and began to practice some fighting. This time Drea was already at the shore of the river, just watching the blonde as he fought with a grace particular to a shoyunin against his clones. Since they began the training two weeks ago, Naruto trained non-stop to acquire this form of taijutsu. Upon looking at his arms, Drea began to feel the pain of Naruto's punches as his arms were a little numb. That glove of his is really magnificent. Not only does he more damage with his punches, but they are also enabling the user to focus some chakra in it, thus powering up the blows. Imagine when he learns how to use Futen Chakra and channel it through his gloves. He could invent a new Taijutsu style called Wind Fist or Hurricane Fist. Shippuken Hurricane Fist has a nice ring to it. Maybe I can talk to him about it when we begin Futen training thought Drea. The pervert was having a weird sensation. He remembered being this insightful over someone else's training only when he trained the Yandime Hokage. 
At the time Minato's growth was so astounding that Jiraiya was beginning to think of ways to improve even further. Now with Naruto it was the same and Jiraiya couldn't help but connect the similarities between father and son as he saw Naruto battling against the cage bunchens. Suddenly, the teacher part resurfaced as he saw Naruto committing a minor flaw. Naruto. Keep your arms up, and don't let yourself open while attacking, you'd be vulnerable to the enemy otherwise. Shouted Drea before hearing a scream in agreement from the blonde, and positioned his arms better in order to not let his guard open. Now feeling content with Naruto's form Drea just stood to watch as Naruto jumped real high and threw one shuriken against the clones before beginning a fast series of hand seals for Ninbu Shuriken Cage Bunch in No Jutsu Ninja Art, Shuriken Shadow Clone. Immediately, the lonely shuriken was suddenly quadrupled and pierced through all the remaining clones thus dispelling them all at once before the real one landed on top of the water, while holding his head from a sudden headache. This happened every time he battled against clones. Every time when a clone is dispelled, Naruto immediately received images on his mind as if the clone's memory was actually his. He couldn't understand why this thing happens. Drea for his part smiled acknowledging the blonde's discovery, as he walked casually towards the wandering blonde. It seems you discovered the secret behind the cage bunchen, said Drea as he stopped in front of the blonde who in turn looked at him startled. What secret? What are you talking about Aero sensei asked Naruto while massaging his temples a bit in order to ease the pain. After a cage bunching is dispelled, everything he saw, heard or read is sent straight to the real one. This technique is originally intended to be used for infiltration purposes alone. By sending a cage bunching inside a castle, for example, the clone could see where the traps and guards are. Before dispelling and sending the information to the real one, I bet that after you dispelled the clones, you received images from the clones' point of view am I right? Asked Drea before seeing Naruto nod and Drea continued. This is a good bonus for you Naruto. Because of your chakra capacity, we could use the clones' abilities to decrease the time needed for us to train something like for instance, the racing gan and the Hari Jizu technique explained Drea, waiting for the information to sink in before he saw Naruto's smile almost reaching the boy's ears. Deciding to contain the boy's enthusiasm, Drea asked the blonde if he wanted some lunch to which Naruto eagerly accepted as he was hungry as hell earning laughter from Drea and together they turned back to the inn in search for some food. On the way back, Naruto summoned two cage bunchens, and all three of them attempted the second part of the racing game. Upon seeing this, Drea smiled upon seeing that the blonde already grasped the meaning behind the cage bunchen training. Equals 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 inside the restaurant equals equals equals. Once back at the inn the two went to the place's restaurant that happened to be a sushi restaurant. Hearing this, the blonde asked if there was any ramen before being slapped on the head by Drea who instructed Naruto to eat more healthy food in order to grow stronger, and be better prepared to defend the village. Upon hearing this Naruto couldn't help but nod and decided to try this sushi. As they sat at the table and placed their orders Drea began asking Naruto about his training so far. Naruto was enthusiastic, that's for sure. He began to speak about how useful the, the restriction seals were and how it helped him to grow stronger and faster. Aero Sensei, do you have any seals that could provide an aid in battle? I've never seen you using any and I was wondering if Fuinjutsu could be used in battle, asked Naruto to which Drea nodded. Fuinjutsu requires a lot of precision and chakra control, and using it in battle is not advisable. For one, any Fuin technique requires some level of concentration, and the enemy won't necessarily wait for you to finish the move. The last shinobi who used sealing techniques in battle was the Yandime with his Huration. Other than that, those seals are used mostly as exploding tags. However, the Temorochimaru managed to invent something although it isn't necessarily useful said Drea, before Naruto asked what it was to which Drea continued. It's called Kachiyos Reiki Kenka, Summoning Lightning Blade Creation, and it consists of two seals located on the user's wrists in order to summon any time of projectiles you want to. The seal itself is easy to make, if you want, I can do it for you. Afterwards in order to activate it, you just have to tap two fingers at the seal and focus some chakra to it. The projectile of choice will appear immediately. Do you want this skill Naruto? Asked Drea earning a prompt nod from the blonde. With this technique, I wouldn't have to worry about carrying shurikens or kunais, plus I won't have to reach my holster for it, 
making more space for other survival equipment said Naruto, earning a nod from Drea who in turn asked the blonde to extend his arms with his hand palms facing the ceiling. The seal engraving will hurt, so hang in there said Drea as his finger suddenly glowed with chakra before he began to inscribe the needed seal on Naruto's wrist. Drea was right when he said the procedure would be painful. Naruto was gritting his teeth in agony, while he was feeling the wrist burning while in contact with Drea's glowing finger. After a while, the right hand wrist was done, leaving only the left one. Drea explained that for the procedure to be complete, both wrists had to be done at the same time. Naruto nodded saying that he was now more accustomed to the pain to which Drea nodded, and proceeded to do the next hand. They're all done Naruto, we'll place a ribbon around it to help ease the pain, and then we can take it off. I however, advise you not to take the bandage off, if surprise is what you're aiming for. We could use a ribbon that covers the entire forearm, and no one will see the seal until it's too late. Also, we could initiate from your hand as well, seeing as these gloves of yours hurt a little bit to use, no said Drea as he took off Naruto's gloves and began the job. In minutes, Drea managed to cover the seal as well as Naruto's hand before the meal arrived. Naruto could only stare at the food in front of him as he wondered if it is any good compared to ramen. He looked at what appeared to be rice with salmon on top of it and grabbed one. After eating it, he was feeling kind of strange, seeing that the food didn't exactly require much chewing. However, when Naruto swallowed he actually liked the new food. Looking at his plate, he took the next one and this time dipped with a black sauce that followed the dish. The result was even better and Naruto ate the whole plate the same way he ate ramen. I'll take it you like sushi, Naruto. Said Drea as he smiled at Naruto's face when enjoying a meal. Liking it is an understatement, Aero Sensei, it's delicious. It's nothing compared to ramen but at least now I found other food to eat besides the noodles. Said Naruto before he called the waiter and asked for more sushi earning a smile from Drea. Equals 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 in Kanaha's hospital equals equals equals. Inside the village's hospital Tsunade and Shizun were visiting a Kunoichi member of the Anu forces as she was interned from heavy bruises and severe chakra exhaustion. The person was from Anu so any data regarding the Kunoichi was restricted to Anu personnel and the Hokage herself. Tsunade was reviewing the treatment on the patient's history board and wasn't pleased at all. This was the second time the woman had to come to the hospital with the same level of bruises and chakra exhaustion and quite frankly Tsunade was concerned with her health. She spoke with the Ami commander and he reported the kind of missions that Ami member Kat made, and it unnerved the Hokage since she knew it was the very person who was being treated that requested being sent to S-ranked missions, aka certain death. Shizun was also concerned for her once colleague at the academy, and she feared that the death of her friend's lover may have caused this desire to do missions non-stop. Unfortunately, there have been cases of solitary ninjas who choose to go to suicide missions in hopes of forgetting their inner pain. She remembered when one Hitake Kakashi did this while in Anbu Black Ops, just after his last friend Rin was assassinated by the enemy. What are you thinking Shizun? Asked Tsunade as she flipped the page from the history board. I don't know she keeps doing this, Tsunade Sama. I don't know how she is feeling right now, but she can't just keep going to these suicide missions she will end up killed stated Shizun, earning a sigh in dismay from Sunate who was thinking between these lines as well. I know Shizun, but I can't do anything to stop here from doing so. According to the Anu commander, she is the one requesting to do these so-called suicide missions. I can't simply overrule her will on this, I wish I could, but I can't. We can only hope that she manages to overcome whatever it is she's feeling right now and stop this nonsense. I'm sure someone already tried to talk to her, but she didn't listen. Come on Shizun, we'll leave her rest for the time being, this mission took a lot out of her and I'm afraid she'll be here for quite a while to recover said Tsunade to which Shizun nodded and followed the blonde Hokage out of the room thus leaving the purple haired Anbu alone to rest. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After lunch Naruto and Drea returned to the waterfall but this time not to train Teijutsu. This time Drea would be introducing the so-called meditation technique he spoke a while ago. Naruto, we'll do that exercise I talked about early and for that I'll call some company said Drea as he bit his thumb and proceeded with the hand seals needed for the Kuchiyos. Suddenly two toads appeared with the exact same appearance. 
The only difference was that one was the size of a horse, and the other the size of a pony. Naruto, Nikumani and his son Gamanikabai. They will aid us with this exercise minus said Drea before the two toads jumped on the water and swam towards the waterfall. Turning to Naruto, Drea turned to explain the exercise. This exercise consists of controlling the flow of chakra inside your inner coils. By focusing on a single hand seal you'll close your eyes and imagine yourself controlling the chakra through the chakra pathways. By doing this you'll learn to be more controlled in tough situations and manage to think clearly despite being interrupted by the enemy. Now strip to your boxers and let's join them under the waterfall explained Drea to which Naruto nodded and took off his clothes before jumping on the water and waited for the little toad to swim under him and lift him a little bit. In minutes, they began to receive the brutal punishment of gravity as the 60-foot waterfall came crushing on their shoulders. Drea immediately made the simple's hand seal and began to control his chakra inside him, thus ignoring all sense of pain from the water falling on his shoulders. The toads were as well, not bothered by the water. However, Naruto was finding it difficult to concentrate while receiving tons and tons of water on his shoulders. Seeing this, Drea instructed Naruto as to the key of getting this exercise that was to focus 100% on the chakra traveling inside him and worry not about pain on the outside. Closing his eyes once more Naruto made the hand seal and tried to focus on his inner chakra. It took a while, but then he managed to let loose of the pain from the water and straightened his posture. This exercise served as means to get to know your chakra better in means of knowing just how much is needed for everything. Also, as Naruto learned how to do it, all of his senses of the outside world simply vanished, thus entering in a sort of trance. The toads looked at him, and were surprised to see the blonde already being able to meditate, before returning to their trance as well. Back to Naruto, he reached a state of self-awareness so great that his mind began to race through all the events of his life so far. Naruto often wondered what he could have done differently, so he was imagining all these situations and placed different scenarios like he using the techniques he knew now against Haku and Zabuza or even against Neji at the Shoyun exams, also the fight against the Kaguya, and also the one against Sasuke at the Valley of the End. Naruto was doing just like the pervert instructed. His chakra was traveling through his body. However, when his chakra reached Kyubi's cage, it woke the fox who in turn opened his eyes to see that in front of him, Naruto's chakra was filling the entire room. Very interesting, the brat is focusing on manipulating his chakra inside his body, and he happened to focus as much of it here near my cage. Nevertheless, I can see that his chakra capacity increased ever since he left with the pervert to train. I guess now the imbecile will learn to fight and not embarrass me again, said Kyubi as he closed his eyes once more and returned to sleep. A couple of hours passed and Naruto was still feeling his chakra when, suddenly, Drea landed a hand on his shoulders, making Naruto open his eyes. When he opened them he realized that the sun was just about to settle down, and then he looked to a smiling Drea. You managed to complete the exercise Naruto. Why don't we head back to the inn and get some sleep? Tomorrow, we'll begin your racing gan training and I kind of hope that you can complete it by tomorrow, despite it not being your goal for this year said Drea earning a nod from Naruto, before they went to the shore and grabbed their clothes. On the way to the inn Naruto, Andrea discussed about Naruto's attempt on meditation. Aero sensei I wanted to talk to you about the fox asked Naruto, earning a look in surprise from Drea because of the subject. When my chakra reached the fox's cage, the usual tension inside that place was suddenly diminished greatly do you know why? Asked Naruto to which Drea turned to think for a while. Naruto, the seal placed on the Kyubi's cage acts according to your chakra. It's possible that since you overflowed the room with chakra that the seal acted strongly against the fox, thus controlling its urges. If this is true then your chakra capacity must have increased the last couple days. While we're here, you'll be doing this exercise more times. Today you managed to reach the state of trance thus being able to look inside your own body, but meditation has also the purpose of self-awareness, and that's where I want you to be at the end of our stay here in River Country, okay explained Drea to which Naruto nodded. A couple hours later, both were at their room snoring like crazy from chakra over usage. Equals 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 next day equals equals equals. The next day, Drea and Naruto stood at a clearing in order to complete the one-handed racing gan. Naruto, 
The first phase of the racing gan you already know how to do let's attain to the second okay. After it, we'll move to third and final phase. Summon close to 20 cage bunchins and begin training, keep this pace, and if you manage to go to the next one do it. While you're doing this, I'll visit one of my sources around these parts. Said Drea to which Naruto nodded, before seeing the pervert leave the premises. Turning once more to the empty clearing, Naruto made the necessary hand seal for the cage bunching and used the equivalent chakra to summon his clones. However instead of 20, Naruto chose to summon 40 clones in order to attempt the Harijizu technique while the others and the real one would attempt the racing gan completion. The Harijizu wasn't that hard to master since Naruto on the first try had pretty much covered the basics. The problem now would be to figure out how much chakra would be needed to cover the entire body with the technique. Equals 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 with Drea equals equals equals. After leaving the brat alone to his training, Drea traveled a couple miles before reaching a house in the middle of nowhere. Clearly a simple two-story house in the middle of the forest would be considered like that. When Drea knocked on the door, he heard what seemed to be a couple yelling to each other before a man opened the door and shouted angrily at whoever it was in order to vent out the frustration of marrying a bitch. Upon seeing the target of the man's frustrations, he realized the huge mistake he made and immediately apologized Drea for the mishap. My excuse is Drea Sama, I didn't see it was you at the door. It's just that Sasam is behaving like a bitch these days and it is being tough to get some rest around here said the man known as Korama before seeing Drea wave the man off as in dismissing the issue. No problems there Korama San, now I was wondering if you could give me information regarding this man. Said Drea as he gave Korama a picture of a C-ranked Konoha missing nin called Azato. Korama, after seeing the picture recognized the man instantly and informed Drea that he asked for shelter to the river country Daimyu, and the man gave him a house to stay not far from their location. Drea appreciated the information and asked if Korama could draw the map for him. Sure. I'll draw you a map no problem. I'd ask though, why are you after a C-ranked missing nin surely he wouldn't be of concern to a sanin such as yourself asked Korama though Drea smiled, and simply said that he would like to have a small conversation with the man, and be on his way. I'm not of a hunter Korama, so I'll just leave the job for them, I'll just talk to him in order to acquire some info that's all, thanks for the map by the way said Drea to which Korama nodded, and then returned to the house where his wife started screaming for him to get a job instead of sleeping all the time. By this time however, Drea was far away from the house as possible. He needed to check if the information was accurate before he came with Naruto to battle this guy. Little did the blonde know that Drea wanted to test the boy's fighting skills against a number of opponents so he acquired the latest copy of Kanaha's bingo book and selected a few enemies he knew Naruto would be able to beat. At first, he wondered if the hunter nins would be angered with him for taking away their subsistence but he dismissed it seeing that the book was thick enough to provide a good number of hunts for everybody. Upon arriving at the place indicated on the map, Drea smiled upon finding the house, and even the man he was looking for, returning from a forest nearby with wood on his arms for a fire it seemed. Smiling once again, Drea turned and returned to where Naruto was training in order to see how the blonde was faring with the racing gan. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After two hours of training the clones dealing with the Hari Jaizu technique were already dispelled since the technique was already mastered by Naruto. So now, the blonde was left with the racing gan to master. The second phase of the technique went down fast as Naruto with his clones needed close to 30 minutes to be able to do one-handedly. The third part though proved to be difficult as now, both Naruto and the clones needed to use the first and second phase altogether. Also, since Naruto was unable to do the technique he was hard pressed not to simply use a clone to aid him and the technique would be completed. However, he needed to concentrate and finish the technique today. His hands though, were already trembling from practicing for so long so he stopped for a while and let the clones continue since they didn't feel pain. The clones protested a little but returned to doing the racing gan single handedly. Minutes passed and the technique was slowly being formed only to dissipate seconds later. It was unnerving to say the least. Getting annoyed Naruto dispelled the clones and immediately felt the rush of information inside his head. The technique was almost complete so Naruto wouldn't need a bunch of clones to cut the time. Resting for a while, 
Naruto decided to rest a little bit from slight chakra usage and loss of stamina. This was the scene that Drea came. The pervert was surprised to see Naruto resting a bit because of his excess chakra capacity, but he chose not to press it. After all, getting the blonde to calm down for a while was like a gift for the old sensei. Hello there Naruto, how's the training going? Asked Drea, earning Naruto's attention. I managed the second phase alright, but the third is a whole different thing said Naruto, though Drea was certain the blonde wasn't telling the whole truth. Drea wasn't one of Sanin for nothing and he asked why Naruto didn't manage to finish the racing gan, even though Drea knew Naruto used more than 20 clones to master the racing gan. Tell me Naruto, have you been working on something else beside the racing gan? Asked Drea seeing Naruto playing the innocent before he made hand seals and said Nimpu Hari Jaizu, Ninja Art Underworld Guardian Spikes Jutsu. Drea was astonished to see Naruto's hair growing, enveloping his body completely. He knew the blonde would work on more than one area at the same time because of the clone's assistance, but he never figured that Naruto would be able to master the Hari Jaizu technique. Well it seems you managed this technique already so I'll teach you another using the hair, but on a later date, now show me your racing gan so far said Drea to which Naruto nodded and extend his arm. After focusing the necessary chakra, the ball began its formation before being completed for two seconds. Naruto cursed once more his inability to do the damn technique, but Drea was too much lost in wonder to hear him complain. The technique execution was flawless and all it needed was to maintain the technique's rotation and strength instead of stopping after getting the ball done. Is it possible that this brat managed to truly learn the racing gan in less than six months? Thought Drea as he heard Naruto continue the complaint. Naruto stopped complaining and try maintaining the rotation and force of the technique instead of releasing once making it instructed Drea to which Naruto cursed once more and attempted one more time. This time though, he did as instructed by Drea only to see the technique completed right in front of his eyes. Both he and Drea marveled to see the energy being contained within a small sphere. Congratulations Naruto, you managed the racing gan single-handedly now it's time to learn how to expand the ball size to at least double of your current one however I believe we covered enough ground for today. So let's wait for tomorrow for more training. Now, remember when I said you would get to face different opponents? Asked Drea to which Naruto nodded, before receiving the picture of the missing nin. Naruto, this is serious right now. I understand you're getting stronger, and you have a good battle experience for a shoyunin. However you still need to feel the pressure of fighting someone who could kill you if you're not careful enough. I know you sensed the Moki Zabuza's killing intent and I agree was quite threatening however you didn't sense the full killing intent cause it wasn't directed towards you but at Kakashi instead explained Drea earning a nod from Naruto who understood what the pervert wanted to say. A ninja is required to kill and as such, he's also subjected to being killed by the one he was supposed to eliminate. Killing someone was a strange concept to Naruto even though he remembered being seconds away from killing Haku at Wave Country if he wasn't able to control his urges. So you're suggesting that I kill this missing nin? Said Naruto to which Drea nodded with a serious expression. I wouldn't do this normally Naruto, however your first kill is going to be tough on you, believe me. Ask any ninja in Konoha that has killed already and they will tell you how hard it was to overcome this face. Nevertheless, while it's dangerous, it's necessary to overcome this for the future said Drea to which Naruto let out sigh in dismay before agreeing with the idea. So what do you know about this man's abilities? Asked Naruto to which Drea smiled and showed the man's page from the bingo book. The man called Azato is considered a C-ranked missing nin with skills equivalent to a shoyunin. He is a mid-level fighter with knowledge of katan ninjutsu and proficiency in taijutsu. His katan ninjutsu was limited though to a couple techniques, so according to the book, it wouldn't be life-threatening. He is located a few miles away from here so we'll go there right now and face him, are you ready? Asked Drea, earning a nod from Naruto. I can't say I know what will be like once the battle starts, but I'm ready as I'll ever be. After all, it's either kill or be killed. Right said Naruto receiving a nod of confirmation from Drea who smiled and then asked Naruto to follow him. On the way, Naruto asked Drea if he was supposed to fight more of these missing nins for his training before seeing Drea nod in the negative. This will be the only one, 
The next ones will be people from other villages since you'll have to face different enemies with different abilities in order to improve your abilities as shinobi. With enough battle experience, you'll be able to choose exactly what techniques to use and when to use them. Now, let's hurry before our guy disappears on us. Said Drea to which Naruto nodded and followed the pervert towards the place where Naruto would have his fight. Equals 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 near the missing nin's location equals equals equals. Hiding behind a tree not at all bothering to hide their presences, since according to Drea, they were testing the man's awareness of enemies. Naruto saw his target and frowned a bit. The man didn't look much probably 20 years old, but his presence wasn't as strong as those he faced before, probably low Shayunin level Naruto wondered. Drea turned to him and observed Naruto for a while before smiling once again. The boy was learning faster than he thought. Naruto was analyzing the man, hoping to learn as much as possible from Azato. Naruto, I'll leave you against him. It will be you who will defeat him. I'll be close by in case you are in need of help, okay? Asked Drea before seeing Naruto nodding at him. Okay, I'm ready to do this. Said Naruto as he began to approach the enemy while suppressing his chakra. Naruto wasn't stupid to hope that he would be able to sneak behind the enemy and simply slit his throat with a kunai however he hoped at least to cover as much ground as possible in order to have the upper hand in battle. After a while when Naruto entered the open field, he took out a kunai from his holster and only waited for an attack from Azato, which soon came as the man flipped his body fast and threw a couple of shurikens towards Naruto. Using the kunai, Naruto managed to block them all and jump in order to be in front of Azato before addressing the man. Azato, from your crimes against Konoha, and as a shinobi from the village, I'll be the one to kill you, prepare yourself, said Naruto before taking his stance of fighting. Azato, for his part, began to snicker in total underestimation at the blonde's abilities. Get serious, kid. What are you a genin? I thought Konoha would send hunter nins against me, not a little genin. I guess they underestimate me, stated Izato, earning a snarl from Naruto, who didn't like being underestimated like that. Underestimating the enemy isn't a nice thing to do, you could be caught by surprise, but I'm afraid that is only one way of knowing this doesn't it? Asked Naruto, earning a nod from Izato, who at least would like the warm-up of beating a genin. From out of nowhere, Azato charged against Naruto with a powerful punch, but Naruto managed to evade and twisted his body and landed a straight reverse kick on Azato's chest. The man was taken aback by the sudden increase of speed, and even passed his hand on the wounded area, surprised that it was hurting like hell. Looking at the blonde, the man snarled in anger. How dare this boy, Azato thought. He decided to not hold back anymore. Molding some chakra Zato began some hand seals before whispering to Tan Gaokakir no jutsu fire release, great fireball jutsu. Suddenly, the fireball erupted from Zato's mouth and charged towards Naruto. The blonde for his part smirked at the insignificant size of the fireball. Both Sasuke's and Drea's fireball were at least three and four times bigger respectively and he managed to dodge it. Charging some chakra on his feet, Naruto used it to dash to the right and charged against the man with a straight chakra powered punch to the man's jaw before hitting straight on. Because of the power behind the punch, Izato was sent flying. Naruto however, didn't stop his attack as he made hand seals for Jirai Shin no Jutsu Torpedo Needles Jutsu. Instantly, Chakra Needle began its formation around Naruto's body until he shot them straight at Izato, who was still in mid-air. The needles hit the target and immediately, Azato's body was pierced multiple times. Instantly, blood splattered everywhere and the man fell down on his knees since some of those needles happened to pierce the leg's muscles. Azato looked at the blonde now with blood in his eyes, this technique was strange, he thought. Azato wasn't familiar with the concept of chakra manipulation, since he was still Shoyunin when he left Konoha, however he knew a normal genin would know how to use chakra like the blonde used. Looking at the blonde one more time, Azato found that he was now feeling fear. He knew someone would come eventually and that he would have to face whoever it was but he was in no way prepared to die. As the blonde approached him Azato could see the boy's eyes as not familiarized to the world of killing. His pure cerulean eyes did well to show Azato of Naruto's innocence regarding the true way of the ninja. Naruto for his part, wondered what he would do right now. Clearly, 
The man was incapacitated since his needles managed to pierce his leg's muscles so his movements were nullified. However, the thought of simply grabbing his kunai and cutting the man's jugular sickened the blonde to no end. The blonde wondered if by killing others, he would be compared to the one living inside of him. If I can't do this, what will happen if I'm unable to deal properly with those who pose a threat to Konoha? Thought Naruto as he picked his kunai once more. Without thinking Naruto did pretend that he was pulling off a band aid. He positioned the kunai on the guy's neck, and without wondering any more about what may happen from now on, Naruto did killed for the first time. He just killed a man who was already beaten. Instantly, Naruto's eyes were lifeless as he looked at Azato's dead body while knowing it was him who killed the man. Drea was already there by his side, and wondered what the blonde must be thinking right now. The fight was quite one-sided, and if Naruto used the racing gan, the fight would be over before it started. However the whole point of fighting missing nins was learning the harsh reality of killing like a ninja and Naruto would just have to face this issue and surpass it with time. Chapter 5 Udama Racing Gan Six months had passed since Naruto learned the hard way of the ninja by killing one missing nin from Konoha. After that event, it took Naruto almost three days to get back to normal. Until then, he wouldn't mutter a single word to his sensei, but Drea never pressed the issue, knowing that Naruto would have to deal with it on his own. In the end Naruto came clean to Drea about his fear of being compared with the Kyubi inside of him, but then he calmed down and understood that being a ninja sometimes means being ready to take lives. He hadn't just grown emotionally, but psychically too, growing up a few inches in height. His muscles were now ripped because of the resistance seals. Also, Naruto's training only increased. Surprisingly, both Naruto's speed and strength nearly doubled. Some time ago, he had to stop using the restriction seals simply because he was already used to using them. Now he had to settle for weights like Lee and Guy so that his speed could increase in time. He now managed to give Drea a run for his money in straight out Taijutsu match, and that was saying something about his training. His training regimen was going nicely since his Taijutsu portion was almost completed. Of course, after that, he and Drea would spar on occasion, but Naruto's Taijutsu was now on pair with a high-level Shoyunin bearing on low Jounin level. Now, because of Naruto's regimen, Naruto was learning about Genjutsu, or rather what it takes to break one at least. Drea learned a long time ago that when Naruto's high chakra capacity gives an advantage in both Ninjutsu and Taijutsu, but he just couldn't use Genjutsu effectively. The reason was simple. Genjutsu requires almost perfect chakra control to be able to use it, and it consists of using a steady flow of chakra, and invading the opponent's chakra system thus beginning the illusion. But as much as Naruto practices his chakra control, he simply has too much chakra to be able to control it effectively up to the point of being able to perform Genjutsu. However, that didn't mean that Genjutsu should be a weakness for him. Learning how to disrupt the chakra flow was vital to keep the technique from doing any major harm on the ninja's mind and chakra flow. Right now, Drea was taking Naruto once again to a little canal that crossed the village where they were staying. Okay Naruto, now that the Taijutsu portion is over, Genjutsu is now the next issue. As you know though, your chakra capacity doesn't allow you to perform Genjutsu, so this will be reduced to learning how to dispel Genjutsu effectively. As you know or don't know, Genjutsu techniques affect the user's chakra flow, thus tempering with all five senses depending on the technique, and the Genjutsu user's will. So, there are two ways of disrupting the technique. The first one, and I believe is the most effective, is to disrupt your chakra flow said Drea, before looking at Naruto and smile upon seeing his puzzled look. Aero sensei, I only understand English so please explain it to me in said language said Naruto, earning a snort from Drea who then explained it better. Disrupting your chakra flow is actually the first step, but the other part part 1 LL explain it later. Now, in order to disrupt your chakra flow, you just need to simply stop the flow of your chakra. Imagine you're standing on water, you're using chakra to even its flow below your feet right? Well, imagine you simply stopping the flow of chakra. What will happen? Asked Drea. That's easy, you fall in the water. Responded Naruto wondering why he need to answer such a stupid question. Right, then the next step is to apply an even stronger chakra thus disrupting the genjutsu technique explained Drea, earning a nod from Naruto before Drea continued. Of course, 
Just explaining to you is easy, but when you get to practice it, you'll see it's tougher. Don't worry, though we'll be practicing a lot of genjutsu disrupts and then I'll be using you as my target. I'll be hitting you with every genjutsu that I know and you must disrupt it at any cost, got it explained Drea, earning a contemplative nod from Naruto who afterwards crossed his arms while trying to digest the information. Upon seeing this, Drea smiled at his pupil. Every time Naruto didn't get the idea right away, he would accept the explanation and then try to elaborate it inside his head, thus trying to explain what needed to be done. Right now, the art of illusions was a foreign concept to the blonde, not only because it was indeed a hard subject to learn, but also because he truly didn't show much interest in the field. The theory itself is complicated enough for Naruto not to use in the midst of a fight, so just like the pervert said, he would just learn how to dispel the illusion, instead of hoping to be able to use it effectively. Now as he was processing the information inside his head, Naruto was thinking of the concept behind disrupting genjutsu that according to Drea, it consisted of disrupting the flow of chakra and then re-establishing it with a surge thus overcoming the opponent's chakra. Problem was that if Naruto wouldn't be able to overcome the opponent's chakra, the procedure wouldn't help. Aero sensei I was wondering about something. You said that after disrupting the chakra flow, I have to re-establish it with a surge thus overpowering the opponent's chakra, but what can I do if the enemy's chakra is more powerful than mine? Asked Naruto to which Drea nodded and explained. Indeed some genjutsu masters managed to overcome the dispelling technique, so it would be useless to use it. In that case, there are two other alternatives. One of them you could use when you're alone against someone, but I wouldn't use it if I were you said Drea, earning a look in confusion from Naruto, before he elaborated further. Immeasurable pain enables the illusion to fade almost instantly, but the cost is way too high. Therefore I'd say it's forbidden explains Drea, earning a nod from Naruto who then, asked from the next alternative that didn't involve sticking a kunai on his thigh. Well, the next alternative is using a foreign chakra to invade your body and end the genjutsu. So in another words, you'd need an ally in battle for that explained Drea, hearing a snort, afterwards from Naruto. So, basically, if the first alternative doesn't work, I'm basically screwed and would have to depend on someone else to aid me, great said Naruto with bare sarcasm. But Drea simply smiled and acknowledged Naruto's blunt expression. Don't worry much about it, Naruto. After we train Genjutsu, you'll know almost instantly that someone is casting on you, having even better chances of breaking it. Also, Genjutsu masters decreased since the last war, so apart from the Achiha there won't be much Genjutsu users explained Drea, but he knew Naruto wouldn't even hear the rest. Some time ago, Naruto declared war against what was left of the Achiha clan. Sasuke almost killed him because of selfish reasons and Itachi is after the Kyubi living within him. I have to be prepared in case either Sasuke or Itachi uses a Genjutsu on me. I heard that Itachi has the supreme genjutsu that's impossible to break, is it true? Asked Naruto, burning a nod from Drea. There are few things that are impossible these days, and Itachi's Tsukiyami is impossible to break. To beat him, you have to stop resorting on your eyes to fight, or either find a way to avoid direct eye contact. Such genjutsu do not even require a strong mind either. You enter an alternative world where he controls everything and trust me, he knows how to break anyone like he managed to break Kakashi's mind. You do remember that only Tsunade was able to heal him, don't you? Asked Drea, earning a nod from Naruto. So, how can I hope to go against him if he could simply look at me and I'm finished snarled Naruto, since he didn't know the answer. Facing Itachi alone was one thing he wouldn't ever do. Well, Naruto let's focus on today alright. You are miles away from having the strength needed to face him. We'll train your genjutsu abilities, okay? Asked Drea, to which Naruto nodded as they continued to walk towards the little river. Equals 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 at Takagakure equals equals equals. Unlike many hidden villages, Takagakure was considered the invisible city simply because it was virtually impossible for someone who wasn't a villager to know where the city was located. For this reason, that their shinobi placed one condition for hosting their first shoyunin exams, also, it served to be the first phase of the exams, since in order for the teams to arrive, they must find their way through the mountain in order to reach the village. The problem was that because the caves inside the mountain had so much earthquakes, 
the pathways that lead to the village would change, thus protecting them from enemy invasions. That being said, only those highly experienced in the shinobi arts would be able to progress to the next part of the exam. In the village's arena, only five teams managed to pass the pathways from the 20 that tried. Of course, the Shoyun hopeful signed a waiver, so the village would be safe from some old beings from some villages council blaming Takagakure for deliberately killing their genin. Sakura, Shino, Kiba Tenten, Neji and Lee were waiting for their matches to start, as they were watching Asuna genin battling against one from Kiri. Due to clan circumstances, both Hinata and Ino were unable to participate, and since Ino couldn't go, Sinead couldn't find a team to place Chouchi in. Ever since Naruto left the village, the Konoha 9 trained themselves to the brick of exhaustion. Their goal was to pass the next Shoyunin exams at all cost. Sakura studied under both Sinead and Shizun, and was already considered a prodigy on the medic field. Plus, the fact that both her agility and strength nearly quadrupled. A couple months prior to the Shoyunin exams, she managed to master Sinead's Teijutsu technique, and even managed to use to break a couple of boulders that were meant to end her team's life in the caves. Also, since she filled Hinata's place in Team 8, Kirena managed to teach her a couple of useful genjutsu techniques for her to learn. The crimson-eyed woman was astonished at Sakura's level of chakra control, and understood why she perked Tsunetsuma's interest. Of course, she didn't know that it was Naruto who asked Tsunet to accept Sakura, but still it was commendable. Shino and Kiba, after the Suna invasion turned to their parents for more advanced family techniques, managing to learn quite a few before the Shoyunin exams date. Neji and Lee helped Ten Ten with her training with weapons and her accuracy was now better than most Jounin in Konoha. Now, however, was the real test to see if they trained hard enough to earn the title of Shoyunin. Looking at the arena, the Jenin from Suna focused Fudan Chakra in a kunai and threw it at his enemy. The kunai was instantly compared to an arrow that pierced the sky straight towards the Jenin from Kiri. Seeing that dodging would be impossible, the genin from Kiri, which turned out to be a blue-haired beautiful girl called Kari used a Mizukawarami water substitution technique, thus escaping the deadly attack. Now turned as a puddle of water, she moved quickly to the other genin's side and materialized once more before making hand seals, hoping that her opponent wouldn't be able to escape. Sutan Suariudin no Jutsu Water Release, Water Dragon Projectile Jutsu. The one from Suna focused upon sensing the chakra usage, but it was too late as the dragon was already hot on his tail, hitting him dead on. The man was unconscious even before hitting on the ground. Up in the stands, all ninjas applauded the girl from her mastery in Sutan Ninjutsu and the Konoha teams were talking amongst themselves. Wow, I wouldn't like to go against her anytime soon said Kiba, earning a nod from Shino and Sakura while Lee only displayed his enthusiasm and Neji displayed an arrogant smile. Indeed, getting hit by the water dragon technique is tough, not because of the damage itself, but also the amount of water inside your lungs. I just hope to get a good hit on her before she uses any water techniques, stated Sakura when the referee shouted the next match. Winner is Kari from Kiri, the next match is between Haruo Sakura from the Leaf and Takashi from Iwa, please approach the center of the arena, shouted the referee. The pink-haired girl stiffened for a bit before breathing slowly, thus easing the tension. Being Sinead's apprentice, she wasn't sent much to missions and as a result, she wasn't able to acquire much battle experience. Also, this was the first time Sakura managed to advance to the final stage, so she wasn't used to battling in front of a crowd. So she wasn't so comfortable upon thinking that all eyes were on her. She learned from her sensei Tsune that the job of the medic nin is often the most dangerous while on a mission. The reason was that they had to concentrate on keeping a constant flow of chakra to heal the wounded while hearing the worst distractions kind of like explosions and battle cries. She remembered an exercise where she needed to heal someone that suffered a flesh wound from a kunai while fake enemies would use all sorts of flashy jutsus with the purpose of losing her concentration. This is nothing compared to Izumo and Kotetsi Senpei's noises while I was trying the exercise. Man, those two could be annoying when they want to be. Now, I must focus on my opponent and my opponent only, thought Sakura as she eyed Takashi in front of her who in turn was smiling from ear to ear. Probably thinking it would be an easy fight to win, Sakura snorted. With time her rather active personality only increased and there were times when she just wanted to punch someone right in the face. Yes, 
He will lose that smile of his after I break his teeth, Shana wrote. Sakura was ready when the referee authorized the fight's beginning, however Takashi found it entertaining and now was laughing even harder. Please girly don't make me laugh, how a petite girl like you managed to come this far it's unknown to me, no matter you won't go further that I can assure you, said Takashi, burning a snort from Sakura. She was going to reply, but she was cut short when she heard someone screaming before turning to see Ten Ten being held by Lee while cursing quite a number of names on Takashi from diminishing women compared to men. Smiling, she closed her eyes and looked at Takashi, before offering her reply. I feared you talk as much as your mouth is big. It's quite annoying if you ask me. Don't insinuate that because I'm a girl, that you will have an easy time beating me. Trust me when this fight is over. I'm sure you'll change your way of thinking concerning the opposite sex, said Sakura, before seeing Takashi smile and closing his eyes showing that he didn't believe a single word the girl said. However, a second later, the man would forever think twice before laughing at Kunoichi. Takashi didn't even open his eyes and he immediately felt immeasurable pain on his face. When he opened his eyes, he saw Sakura's fist practically piercing his skull, before his body was somersaulted throughout the stadium. Takashi flipped his body using the momentum, before looking at Sakura with mixed feelings, surprise and anger. He never felt such pain before and surprisingly, for him, it came from a girl. The reason for his anger was being caught by surprise. You fucking whore, how dare you. Now you're dead, said Takashi as he initiated a series of hand seals. Dotan Dorier Dango, Earth Release, Mausoleum Earth Dumpling Jutsu. Instantly, Takashi smashed his hands on the ground and lifted a huge boulder before throwing it straight at Sakura. The boulder wasn't as big as to incorporate the entire stadium so Sakura managed to evade the attack before throwing four shuriken at Takashi. The man sneered at the attack and grabbed a kunai to deflect them all easily. However, Sakura wouldn't let him as she began her series of hand seals for the dokiguri technique. Takashi cursed the incoming black cloud, but Sakura's plan worked since Takashi forgot about the incoming shuriken, which then, pierced his flesh. The man's screams of pain echoed throughout the entire stadium and immediately forfeited the match from fear of dying from blood loss. Seeing this, Sakura ended the poison smoke technique, and landed on the ground only to hear the referee voicing her victory. From the furthest corner of the stadium, Sakura could see the judges smiling at her display, which she assumed would qualify her for upgrading her in rank. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. Obviously oblivious to Sakura's abilities, Naruto was training how to counter genjutsu techniques. More specifically Naruto and his clones were training how to counter genjutsu. Naruto's clones were perfect for chakra-related techniques since they could transfer knowledge back to the real one. Physical training, though Naruto had to do on his own, but that he already got covered. Since his chakra capacity only grew with time Naruto was able to fill the lake with clones, earning a lot of complaints from the local villagers, because they couldn't use the lake for their needs like washing their clothes or gather some water for cooking. Seeing this, Drea called all the Naruto's to a halt, since the boy also needed the rest even though the blonde never complained. Oi Naruto, come here for a second, I want to talk to you, shouted Drea, earning a gathered scream from the blondes, before they began to dispel one by one. It actually took a while for all of them to leave, but the results were instant. What's up, Aero sensei I believe I almost got it covered with the cage bunch in training, bloated Naruto, earning a nod in acknowledgement from Drea who then took a sit on the ground, ushering Naruto to do the same. Naruto, I've been thinking about your schedule of training and ways to increase your training, said Drea, instantly picking Naruto's interest before the pervert elaborated. With your cage bunch in training, you managed to train close to four months worth of genjutsu. The only issue left is to practice for real. Now, I have a proposition for you, explained Rea. What kind of proposition are you talking? Is it a new jutsu? Asked Naruto, earning a chuckle from Drea, who couldn't help but feel that way upon seeing Naruto's eagerness to become stronger. I'm talking about improving your racing gan, said Drea, but instead of seeing the usual glimpse in Naruto's eyes, he saw confusion. Aero sensei, I've already learned how to use the racing gan single handed. What more is there to learn about it? asked Naruto, earning a snort from Drea. Kid, the racing gan was the fourth surprise technique together with the Huration. For your information, 
It took him nearly three years to create the racing gan. Do you really think you managed to complete the technique after only using it for a little over six months? Using the technique in one hand was actually a handicap you needed to overcome. The power behind your spiraling ball didn't change at all. It just became faster to create. Do you see where I'm going with this? Asked Drea, earning a subtle nod from Naruto. So you're saying that I can control the force of the technique? Asked Naruto, before he saw Drea suddenly extending his arm and create a normal-sized racing gan. Watch closely, Naruto, said Drea, as he focused on the technique. As he watched, Naruto wondered if he was seeing things as the spiraling sphere was growing in size right in front of him. It didn't take long until the sphere doubled its size. Seeing the astonished look from the blonde, Drea smirked, before explaining the concept behind the technique. Naruto, as you know to do the racing gan, both chakra rotation and force are condensed forming a sphere. So in theory, you need to increase the speed and the force behind the technique while maintaining the sphere shape explained Drea, before seeing the face of shock from Naruto. He expected as much since the concept itself took Minato three years to create. Sounds difficult, muttered Naruto as he considered the idea inside his mind. No Naruto, it sounds impossible. But while for others it is nearly impossible for you is just difficult seeing as you can use the cage bunshin to train. But let's worry about this another time for now we'll test Genjutsu attacks on you and it will be up to you to break them got it, said Drea, earning a nod from Naruto. I'll begin with a D-ranked illusion, and then I'll increase to a C level. The higher the rank, the more chakra is used, thus you have to overcome the amount of chakra I'm using, okay? Asked Drea, earning a nod from Naruto, who put up some distance between him and the pervert before nodding once more. Drea understood the cue and molded his chakra with the simplest illusion by using the rat seal. Maganarakami no Jutsu demonic illusion, hell viewing Jutsu. Instantly, Drea disappeared and instead the demon fox itself appeared before Naruto, showing his hell viewing, aka the Kyubi's escape. The demon grabbed Naruto with his claws and was about to eat the blonde when Naruto began the sequence for disrupting Genjutsu. First, he stopped his chakra flow and then he immediately flooded his chakra coils with his chakra. Kai. Drea appeared in front of him smiling at Naruto from managing to break a D-ranked Genjutsu. Nicely done Naruto, now let's see the higher level illusions. Remember the higher the technique, it will take an even higher amount of your chakra to overcome my illusion. Now let's see you overcoming a C-ranked illusion. Try increasing your chakra even more than the amount you used for the D-ranked Genjutsu. Let's go said Drea, before initiating a different series of hand seals and molding the necessary chakra for Kori Shinchur no Jutsu Sly Mind Effect Jutsu. Now, Naruto saw the landscape in front of him slowly falling upon him, and he wondered what type of illusion this was. He remembered Drea explaining that illusions are powerful allies of a ninja. Since with them, pain, suffering, grief, fear, all negative emotions could be transferred to the opponent, and make him suffer everything simultaneously. He once again began the technique needed for disrupting the technique, but since the mountain would take some time to fall down on him he had time to test how much chakra is needed to overcome a C-ranked Genjutsu. He used the amount he used for the D-ranked one, but this time it wasn't enough as the mountain kept falling on him. Once again, he began the sequence only this time he used a larger quantity of chakra, before the real mountain appeared in front of him. Good good Naruto, very good, it's okay to use this opportunity to test how much chakra is needed, but in a real fight, be sure to know that the enemy won't give you time to use a counter. When we spar once more, we'll be able to use all three forms of ninja arts and by that time, you'll be able to disrupt the technique before it actually starts. Next one is the B-ranked Genjutsu and for now on Naruto, the illusions are powerful enough and susceptible to inflict mental trauma if the mind is weak, focus on the objective and don't face the illusion like it was real, okay? Asked Drea to which Naruto nodded, before the pervert began a complicated series of hand seals for Mogen Jigoku Gapa, Demonic Illusion, Hellfire Jutsu. After Drea stopped with the last seal Naruto expected for the illusion to begin, except that nothing happened. Drea was just standing there with his eyes focused, and with his hands doing the last hand seal. Suddenly, though, the temperature began to increase exponentially. When Naruto looked up, though, he regretted this decision forever as a huge fireball engulfed him in milliseconds, burning his skin. 
Naruto knew this was an illusion, hell he saw Jiraiya doing it, but the pain was so much unbearable that he couldn't focus on the disruption technique. All he could do right now was to scream from the pain. Upon seeing this, Jiraiya had to stop the technique from fear of further damaging Naruto's mind. Naruto was in so much pain that even though Jiraiya broke the illusion, he kept screaming as his memory believed he was still burning to death. It took Jiraiya to shake him a couple of seconds to wake him up from the nightmare that was to burn down. Naruto, are you okay? Answer me, please shouted Jiraiya, but the only response he got was Naruto shakily nodding his head in acknowledgement. It's better that we stop for now, let's head to where we're staying so you can rest advised Jiraiya, earning a nod from Naruto who had to be carried by the old Sanin since his legs were shaking a lot. Hours later, Jiraiya was staring at the fireplace of the hotel and they were staying as he remembered the scene before his eyes. The genjutsu that he used on Naruto was only B ranked chakra wise, but the effects can lead to an A ranked illusion if the opponent never faced it before. Drea's concern was that perhaps, Naruto has been training so much that he didn't have the chance to simply wander around a little, take in the sights, or even have a bath at the onsen. Drea wondered if he should cut some of the blonde slack. It wasn't that Naruto complained about the overload of training which he never did, but what happened today was clearly, a result from fatigue. The pain was, unbearable for sure, but Naruto just couldn't train, all the time during these three years. It wasn't long until Drea heard some footsteps coming his way. He didn't need to turn to see who was making the noise as the person just seated next to the pervert, but for some reason couldn't meet eye to eye. Don't worry about it Naruto. Genjutsu sometimes can deal more damage than ninjutsu and taijutsu combined. The key to a powerful genjutsu is to attack the very mind of the user making him see, hear or feel things that aren't there. Also, if you don't want to feel prey to it ever again, you'll need to have a strong mind, or strong resolve to settle your differences and grieves in life. The only reason genjutsu is able to affect us so much is because we can't help but be human, we all have emotions we all suffer from them. It's inevitable said Drea as he looked at the blonde's eyes for a while. I know that somewhat, but if I want to fight in a chiha, I have to get accustomed to genjutsu attacks. I'd be damned if either Sasuke or Itachi just look at me and the fight is over explained Naruto, earning a nod from Drea. We'll have plenty of time to train you in that area, amongst others as well so please do not worry. Rest for today, and we'll give another try at the genjutsu later on said Drea, but Naruto's face was clear to Drea. Every time, the Sanin mentioned the word rest, Naruto would just shove it, and say he needed to train harder. Drea once remembered how he had to use a genjutsu to get the blonde to sleep. Naruto, I'm serious this time. I told you that resting your body after a stressful exercise is imperative. You don't want me to use that technique once more do you? I'll use it if it means to slow you down somehow stated Drea to which Naruto snorted, but said nothing at first. He then, turned toward his bed and simply walked for a while, before turning to face Drea. I guess I'll go to sleep then. Good night Aero Sensei said Naruto to which Drea nodded. Don't worry Naruto, you'll be stronger in no time, rest up kid and tomorrow we'll take a look at the new racing gan we talked about said Drea, earning a nod from Naruto who then continued to walk towards his bed. Equals 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 and Konoha equals equals equals. Looking at the ceiling for what seemed like forever, one Uzuti Yorgao tried hard to remember what happened for her to be back at the hospital. Didn't matter though to her as in a matter of seconds, everything that happened in her last S-ranked mission came flooding her mind. She remembered the war-like mission she threw herself in and the number of opponents she faced pretty much alone. She even remembered being hit so much in the ribs that she passed out right there on the field. It was good that she had at least someone to rescue her, or else she wouldn't be alive right now. That was the thing though. Yorgao thought oftentimes about what she could do to end her misery and going through high-risk missions seemed like an honored way to go and in the same time, get to join her lover in heaven. Deku Hayate died trying to warn Konoha from the impeding sand sound invasion in Konoha, but on the way he engaged in battle against a sand jounin who used an elemental blade and killed him. At the time, Yorgao saw his limp body for a while, but she couldn't cry. After all, she belonged to the most prestigious ninja order in Konoha, but while she couldn't cry throughout the mission, 
she could at least have some time alone to do that once she goes to sleep alone in his apartment. So many memories of her lover were impregnated throughout her life and personal belongings that she couldn't forget his death and move on with her life. Friends already tried to encourage her into moving on. She even remembered the Hokage advising her into stop getting herself killed all those times, but she just couldn't being a strong ninjas like herself eventually the only way for her to vent her frustration was going on mission after mission. Looking to the left, she saw her belongings and got out of bed to collect them however because of spending so much time in bed her entire body ached to no end. Plus her ribs were still hurting. Man, those Iwanins hit hard, I can still feel his feet hitting my stomach hard. I guess I'll have to do some routine missions for the time being and then I can ask for a tougher mission, thought Yurgao as she grabbed her cat mask and placed before opening the door to her room and disappeared before the nurse could come and check up her health just like all the other times your gao had to heal. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. When the first ray of sunshine entered the room, Drea opened his eyes after a nice drunken sleep. Well, actually, he was already feeling the hangover, but the sleep was fantastic. He was only waiting, though, to hear the same thing he hears all the time. Cage bunch in no jutsu. There it is thought Jiraiya as he smiled. Every day Naruto would wake up sooner and do some light workout by summoning some clones and fight against them in straight Taijutsu. Getting up, Jiraiya dressed up and head straight outside to see Naruto fighting off against 10 of his clones. Usually, Jiraiya would be surprised to see such a display of Taijutsu, but after seeing for God knows how long, he ceased to be amazed. Naruto with one roundhouse kick followed by one reverse kick on the other side managed to dispel three of his clones, and another two of them were already on his tail, obliging him to use his arms to defend against the barrage of punches that soon followed. However, the best defense is offense so Naruto kept defending the punches for a while before seeing an opening given by one of the clones, thus aiming a straight punch at the clone's nose thus dispelling him. The other one was surprised and looked to the smoke next to him allowing Naruto to land a reverse kick on the last clone's ribs. Looking at the pervert from afar, Naruto dispelled the rest of the clones and ran straight to his teacher. Good morning Aero sensei greeted Naruto, but now displaying a much healthier smile which was noted by Drea. Good morning Naruto, I see you are already warmed up for today. Let's begin with the racing gan training, then said Drea, earning a nod from Naruto who instantly summoned a couple hundred cage bunchins, before all of them screamed the word ready in unison. Good. Good, now leave the clones to the racing gan for now Naruto, I want to try something with you, if I may said Drea, earning a nod from the real one before he turned to the clones and nodded at them before turning once again to Drea as the clones began to form the racing gan, and then expand its shape. Drea for his part smiled at Naruto's large chakra capacity before looking down on the real one. Naruto, I want to see if you're able to utilize a weapon in combat stated Drea. What kind of weapon? Asked Naruto though the subject was interesting. He had to fight a Iwanin two months ago, and the man had a bow staff to compete. The image of the opponent blocking all the shadow shuriken made Naruto eager to know about the art of the bow staff. Other weapons though, weren't that much interesting. He could take care of himself with a kunai or even a nodeki small sword, but he wouldn't even bother to learn a katana or kodashi. Upon looking at Drea, the man gave the answer. I have with me here stored either a katana or a bow staff. Which one do you like to learn? Asked Drea, knowing that the answer was obvious. Naruto chose the bow staff, right on the spot. Good choice Naruto, I could even teach you my sensei style of fighting. Saratobi Hiruzen was considered a master in the art said Drea, smiling at the boy's choice, but Naruto smiled even further upon realizing just to whom was Drea referring. You mean to say that I can learn the old man's style? Ain't that sort of clan secret? What if the Saratobi clan finds out? Asked Naruto, receiving a nod from Drea. My sensei's bow staff style is free to all those who wishes to learn how to use this weapon Naruto. Besides, he would have gladly taught you in person in case he knew you wanted to. Now, here is the scroll for you to read before you sleep for later training. Now, Join your clones for the racing gan training said Drea to which Naruto nodded, before extending his hands and forming the energy sphere from thin air. Equals 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 and Konoha equals equals equals. The moon started to rise in Konoha as the lights were slowly appearing throughout the village. 
The stores beginning to close and the bars and restaurants were beginning to open for the lovers, friends, and family to frequent. Both civilians and shinobi filled the streets with life and joy as they wandered out places. One Anbu operative though, wasn't so thrilled to be coming home after three months of risked assignments. After leaving the hospital, your guest team did some security scouts throughout the village territory before being freed by the Anbu commander since she was still in recovery from the last mission. To say the truth, though, she didn't want to return to her apartment. It was always empty now because of her lover's death, and she didn't want to sleep alone. Of course, she slept alone outside the village amongst missions, but it was different since she didn't have to stare at her empty bed where she and her soon-to-be husband shared so many moments together. Sometimes, she would even sleep on the sofa from fear of having nightmares of Hyatt's death. The doctor said once that plenty of rest would speed her recovery but he neglected to take into consideration that your gal wasn't able to sleep more than two to three hours before nightmares begin to plague her mind. The neighbors even commented about the fact that your gal would scream Hyatt's name repeatedly after one of the worst nightmares she ever had. I'm tired, but what will happen once I close my eyes? I can't help but want to feel Hyatt's body close to me. It was the only thing that comforted me enough to fall asleep. But now he's gone from my life thought your gao as she took off her anu clothes, revealing a beauty not seen in many kunoichi. It could better be described as a goddess amongst women. Her beautiful purple hair in perfect synchronization with her beautiful brown eyes and her smooth skin, clearly any men who managed to get a look at her would be thankful just by looking. But she didn't leave it for long, putting some light clothes and tried to sleep early. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. The race in Gan training, surprisingly, took longer than expected. Ever since Naruto began using the cage bunshin, nearly four hours passed for him to be able to expand the size of the racing Gan. It was without time though, as a minute later Naruto would simply pass out from chakra loss. He was able to expand the racing Gan at least four times to what he was able to do, and the ball now was twice the size Drea's normal racing Gan appeared. The damage of course, increased exponentially as Naruto slammed it on a small hill. He managed to create a 10 feet in diameter tunnel all the way to the other side, before passing out in the middle of it. Now, Drea was carrying the blonde back to the hotel with a proud expression of his face. Training with clones did wonders for Naruto, and in little more than 6 months, Naruto already increased his Taijutsu Genjutsu and the Racing Gan abilities to at least a high Shayunin. By the end of the year Naruto would learn how to use the bow staff effectively and then finally begin wind elemental manipulation. Drea was so enthusiastic that he began to consider teaching Naruto a second affinity on the third year, maybe Dotan or Sutan. That's it for this part if you enjoyed it then like, share and subscribe for the next video as it's going to be more interesting, and also check out the other playlist hope you would like them too.